What's up guys Chaos Shinobi here. This is what if Naruto has dual mystery bloodline. Summary, everyone knows what happens in the story of Naruto. But what if there were a few twists and things? Like him having a twin brother? A Keke Gankai? Maybe two? Maybe certain people had more common sense because they knew Minato and Kushina personally and knew were having kids? Chapter 1, October 10th, After Sunset Inside of a room in the hospital of Konoha, there was a set of people. There was a doctor, two nurses, a patient on a bed and a man next to it. The patient was a woman giving birth while the man next to her was her husband. His name was Minato Namikaze, the Ondame Hokage of Konoha. His wife's name was Kushina Uzumaki. This day was the day they were excited. It was the birth of twins. However only a few know about this event. They are the doctor and nurses, obviously, the previous Hokage Haruzen Sarutobi, Jiraiya of the Sanin, Tsunade of the Sanin, Kakashi Hitake, Mikita Uchiha, Mebuki Haruno, and all the clan heads. Most weren't there since they had work to do but wished them luck. The guys mainly did to Minato and told them to use chakra on his hands unless he wants them broken. It didn't help. Minato was on the floor holding Kushina's hand as she pushed and screamed. Minato went through a war and a lot of enemies and yet nothing could compare to the pain he was experiencing. He tried to comfort her but she looked at him with hateful eyes. You know the ones you get when the woman blames you for doing this to her? Yeah that one. Anyways Minato tried to help calm her but it sometimes made it worse, aka crushing of hand more. She kept pushing until they heard a cry. Congratulations. It's a boy. The doctor says as he hands the boy to one of the nurses. She cleans the child and wraps him up then passed him to his father, after Kushina let him go. Minato held the little boy in his arms, after regaining feeling in one hand. The little boy had blonde hair and light tan skin. When he gently opened his eyes, they were bright blue much like his father's. Minato gently passed him on to Kushina as she held her baby. Hi little one. It's your mommy. She says in a motherly tone, Minato wondering where the other Kushina went and hoping she never returns. The little boy looks at his mother and giggles softly as he then looks at his father with big eyes. Everything is peaceful until... Hokage-sama. Ananbu appears through the door yelling for his leader. The scream makes the little boy cry as Minato looks on. What's wrong? With fear in his voice, the Anbu says. The QB is attacking. Everyone in the room gasps. Kushina wondered why until she remembered she was attacked earlier by a man in a mask. She fended him off but she felt weak when he took QB out of her. He would have killed her if Anbu and Minato hadn't come on time. Minato looks at his wife before looking at the Anbu. Mobilize everyone and have the civilians evacuate to the shelters. Have all Jinan and Lo Chunin protect them while have all Hai Chunin and Hire try to hold back the beast. He orders in an authoritative voice. The Anbu salutes and leaves before saying yes Hokage-sama. Minato turns to Kushina as she holds her son close knowing what might come. No Minato. I won't let you take him. Minato kneels next to her. I know Hun but I have no choice. You know I just can't be killed. I know growing up as a Jinchiriki isn't the best life but there is no other choice. You know that. Kushina looks at her son and nods sadly. Can we at least name him before you take him? She whispers softly. He nods as she holds her as they both look at their son. He looks at them as he reaches up and grabs Minato's bangs pulling them gently. They smile at that as a single tear fall from both of their faces. Well I do remember we promised Jiraiya we would name our firstborn after the character in his book. Kushina looks at him before looking at her son. Naruto. Our little maelstrom. Perfect. She says before handing him to Minato crying some more. Minato looks at her and cries also. Please forgive me Kushi-chan but I can't ask anyone else to use their child. I know. I forgive you. Go before QB destroys the village. She says. Minato nods before looking at the doctor. Protect her. The doctor nods since before he became one he was an Anbu. Minato disappears via Shushin. Kushina cries some more before pain sets in again. Ah. I forgot it was twins. She screams as the doctor goes back to work. After about half an hour, a second child is born. It's another boy Kushina-sama. He says as one of the nurses cleans and wraps the child around in a blanket. She hands him to Kushina as she looks at him with a smile. The boy was the same as Naruto except he had red hair like his mother. He gently opened his eyes showing purple colored eyes. Kushina smiled as the boy smiled back and giggled. My second baby boy. Hmm Ganta. You like that name? The child giggles as he puts his little fist in his mouth. Okay Ganta Uzumaki. Please take care of your brother just in case. She says as she hands him to the doctor. Kushina? He asks before she starts to get up. What are you doing? She ignores him as she stands, a bit wobbly. I need to go to Minato. 
He won't be able to hold QB down without my chains. But you can't in this state. You're weak from giving birth to not one but two children. I know but if I don't help, Konoha might be destroyed and they won't have a home. The doctor looks down as little Gana cries wanting his mother. Please after this put my kids together. Don't separate them. I'm sure Minato would want Naruto to be seen a hero. The doctor nods before Kushina looks at the nurse nearest her, still wobbly as she holds onto the bed. Please hand me a soldier pill. I know it might do more damage in the long run but I need to help. The nurse hesitates but complies. Still in her hospital gown, she takes the pill then runs after being rejuvenated. The doctor and nurses stand there as Ganda keeps crying in the doctor's arms, all three hoping this turns out okay. While Kushina and Minato subdue the QB and go through with a jutsu they will have to do, Sarutobi walks into the room Kushina was in and looks at the doctor. Where is Kushina? He demands but one look at the doctor's eyes and he knows where she went. I see. She told me to put Naruto and Ganda together afterwards Sarutobi Sama. He nods as all four walk out and head to the nursery. After Sarutobi knows Ganta is safe he heads to where the battle takes place. It takes almost an hour but Kyuubi is finally defeated. At the cost of Konoha's two greatest shinobi. Sarutobi heads back to the hospital and puts little Naruto next to Ganta. Sarutobi smiles as the children sleep. He knows he will have to be Hokage again but for now he will take in the sight of two kids sleeping peacefully and knows these two will have a great future. That is until his mistake. That was seven years ago. Today it is night time in Konoha. Everything is peaceful, well except the screaming mob running down the street shouting obscenities and things like demoness and twin demons that. Why is there a mob running? Well if you look in front of them you would see two children running for their lives. Running from this mob, one has bright blonde hair all spiky and messy while the other had red hair, spiky but a bit cleaner. If you could see from the front you would see they are identical except the blonde has blue eyes and whisker marks on his cheeks while the other has purple eyes and faint whisker marks that are barely visible. They are Naruto and Ganta Uzumaki and they are running like they have for the last three years. They understood why today of all days this happened. Other days it isn't this bad but they still get hurt by the people in the village. But today is the worst because today is October 10th, their birthday. But it wasn't happy because today is the anniversary of when Konoha was attacked by the QB no Yoko. It is a day of mourning but also a day of celebration because their village was saved from the fox. They celebrate by having a party but also by doing their yearly fox hunt started two years ago. Who came up with it is unknown but the villagers don't care. All they care is for two innocent boys to pay for their crimes that they never caused but the villagers didn't see that. Well most didn't. The ones that know the truth try to help them as much as they can but thanks to the village council, the civilian side anyways, always stop them since they are as blind as most of the villagers. Only one of the civilian council people knows better and tries her best to thwart their plans along with the shinobi council but it isn't enough thanks to Sarutobi giving them too much power. But today that help can't do much. The boys kept running as they tried to escape their attackers even though they were getting tired. They both wear a white shirt with a symbol for Konoha on the back and blue shorts that came to their knees. They have some black sandals on their feet as they made clack clack sounds on the ground. They ran until they hit a dead end. They tried to run back but were cornered by the sneering mob. They backed up until one threw a bottle and hit Naruto knocking him out. There are Anbu nearby but didn't interfere since most hated the children while others didn't want to be labeled demon helpers by the village. They knew the truth but were cautious until the truth would surface. Gata looked at Naruto's unconscious form until he turned back to the mob, anger in his eyes. Leave us alone. We did nothing to you. He yells at the mob but they don't care as they walk forward throwing stuff at Ganta. He puts his arms up in defense until he yells. Leave. U.S. Aloni. He moves his arm as he feels a bit winded, to the side and touches a nearby pipe. What happens next shocks everyone watching. A man in front of the mob looks down as he is impaled by thin multiple metal rods all over his chest, stomach, arms and legs that stick out to the other side. He looks up following the rods until he sees them coming from the pipe that Ganta is touching. Ganta is frozen in fear looking at the man and the rods that came from the pipe. The man's eyes glaze over then slumps down indicating he is dead. The crowd and the Anbu stay still until the third Hokage jumps down and sees what happened. Ganta looks at him mouthing I'm sorry before falling down and passing out. The rods go back to the pipe as Sarutobi moves in and catches Ganta. He gently picks up Naruto before turning back to the mob. Leave here and go home. No one speaks of this or its death. This is now an S rank secret. This goes the same for the Anbu and anyone else watching. Dismissed. He ordered before shushining away to the hospital. Everyone stayed there for a couple minutes before registering what happened afterwards. The mob disperses as the Anbu does the same. The mob having one thought what happened? 
while the Anbu had another different one did he really use the Yondai Ms. Keke Genkai? As that happened, Sarutobi was in a room in the hospital with Naruto on one bed and Ganda in another. There are some doctors and nurses but only three Sarutobi could trust with the boys. They were the doctor and two nurses that were there for their birth. The others were only there because their Hokage demanded it but in reality they would rather see the demons dead. Sarutobi sat on a chair in the room pondering on how to explain to the boys about today. He would have been there but like always the council had to come up with some stupid excuse for a meeting just so he would be preoccupied. But for now his mind was on the two boys. Minato, Kushina I made a big mistake. How do I rectify this? He thought as the nurses and doctors walked out except for Takashi the doctor and Ali and Ali, the twin nurses. Sarutobi looks up as they tell him they are okay and knee dressed. He nods as they walk out to check on other patients while Sarutobi looks at the boys. He knows he has to fix things but at the same time knows he can't reveal their heritage. Not until they become at least Chunin or until 18. He hopes the former comes first. For now he has to wait until they awaken. Chapter 2 October 12 It's been two days since the incident. However in the village it is as normal as can be. Mainly since only a few knew what happened that day and kept quiet knowing the Hokage won't go back on his word. Speaking of the Hokage, he was in his office doing the most dreadful thing in the world. Paperwork. Well more like watching the stack wondering if it is alive or not. He sighed in his hands as he smokes his pipe while closing his eyes. Memories of the past appear and flash through his mind. Mainly his wife, the attack on Konoha, but the strongest and most lasting one is the one from two days ago. He opened his eyes as he senses an Anbu appear. The Anbu has typical Anbu gear but has a mask that resembled a dog. However, what really stood out was his silver hair that defied gravity. Report. The aged Hokage said in a demanding tone as the Anbu saluted. Yes Hokage-sama. It seems the boys are awake now. Sarutobi stood up as he donned his Hokage hat. Okay I will be there shortly. Hokage-sama. The Anbu spoke. Sarutobi looks at him. Are you going? Before he can finish Sarutobi speaks. I don't know just yet. I've been thinking about it and I'm on the fence. I know I need to correct my mistake but I also need to look out for them in the village. The Anbu nods. Well the ones who know the truth will follow and accept Hokage-sama. Sarutobi nods and thanks as they both leave via Shushin. They arrive at the hospital and walk in, the dog-masked Anbu jumping to the shadows. He goes to the receptionist and tells him where he will go. The receptionist nods as Sarutobi walks away. He makes it to the room and heads inside to see the boys leaning up on their beds with their doctor talking with them. Gana sees the Hokage and shouts. GG. Naruto notices and waves. Sarutobi smiles and waves back. How are you boys? We are okay and Doc says we can leave today. Naruto replies with a smile. The doctor smiles too before turning to the Hokage. They are 100% healed and hyperactive now. He says as the Hokage snickers to that. Well that's good. Now you too. I left you some clothes so go change and I will take you to my office. The boys look at him in confusion. Um why? Gata asks as they jump off their beds. I'll explain when we get there. The boys nod and do what they are told. After some time in the hospital which took too long because of the bickering over their new clothes, the trio leave the hospital and walk to the Hokage mansion. The boys come out of the hospital wearing some of the oddest sets of clothes, well that's what Gana thought. They both had on matching jumpsuits except opposite in colors. Basically Naruto had all orange with blue sections while Gana had all blue with orange sections. Naruto was pleased while Gana just looked at the Hokage with a mix of hate and sadness. You couldn't pick better clothes GG? I mean I like blue but this is too much and for Naruto he looks at his brother. He's a walking target dummy. The Hokage looks at them as they walk. Well they are your favorite colors. Gata almost faults at that. Yeah but even this is too much. I'm fine with it. That's because you like anything orange Naruto. Gata says looking at him with narrowed eyes. The rest of the walk was in silence until they make it to the Hokage mansion. They head to Sarutobi's office as the Hokage sits on his chair and the kids sit on two chairs in front of the desk. So why are we here GG? Gata asks as they fidget on their chairs. I will tell you but you two need to calm down. They do, kinda, as Sarutobi takes in a big breath. He rubs his head as he looks at the kids. Okay I have been thinking a lot about what I will tell you but this will stay between us okay? He says looking at them. They nod. Promise me you won't tell a soul. They nod again and say I promise as Sarutobi activates a silencing and genjutsu seal under his desk. Okay I have been thinking a lot of what I will tell you. And I will start saying I'm sorry and hope you forgive me. They boys look at him in confusion but before they say anything, he says and let me finish before you say anything. Don't interrupt okay. They nod letting him continue. 
As Gonda probably already told you he discovered a power that day while you were unconscious. That power is unique and only you two will have it. They not knowing they are listening. Now this part is important. That power you got came from your father the boys gasps at this yes I know who he is. It is called a Keke Genkai and you two are the last to use it. That is because your father is me not Onami Kaze, the fourth Hokage. He stops there and braces his ears. If the seal in the room wasn't up, everyone could hear Nani? Come from the Hokage Tower. Sarutobi ears were ringing even with his ears covered and picked them trying to get his hearing back. Meanwhile the boys, well are shocked. Their eyes are bulged out anime style while their jaws are on the floor. Sarutobi looks at them and holds back a laugh knowing how serious this is. The boys slowly recover while they try to understand what they were told. Gata looks down with a serious look in his face while Naruto looks down with a sad look on his face. It became quiet for a while until Gata speaks. Why? Sarutobi looks at Gata but doesn't say anything wondering what he meant. If we are his sons then why are we mistreated? And no matter what we do we don't get acknowledged. Sarutobi sighs and looks down wondering how to answer. If you're wondering why he says that, it's because these two are known as the twin pranksters of Konoha. They are known for the pranks that they do on most of the villagers for reasons only the boys know. They are also known by the Anbu as the twin phantoms for their stealth, even though at first, their skills sucked but after a couple months of running with the Anbu, they upped their skills. They can hide with the best of them, which in turn help the Anbu up their skill who are grateful for it, even the demon haters. Because of this, the boys could go anywhere, except outside the village, to find things out. Over time, they even made it into the Shinobi library which is forbidden for anyone under the Chunin ninja rank. In there, they found out about many things. History, jutsus that weren't forbidden, about chakra and many other things. There they found out about the Hokages which in turn made the boys look up to them, especially the fourth who became a hero to them. So imagine finding out that your hero is also your father. Sarutobi looks at the boys. Because none of the villagers know about it. In fact only a few do. They boys look to each other before looking at the Hokage. What do you mean? Naruto asks. The reason why is because your father and mother had a lot of enemies. Well they still do. Some if not most still hold a grudge against them and if they find out about you two they would most likely try to get their revenge on them by harming us. Gana finishes. Sarutobi nods as Naruto looks at his GG. What about our mother? She is Kushina Uzumaki, the Red Death. Gana exclaims. Sarutobi looks surprised and becomes suspicious. How did you know? Like a switch. They both smile nervously and scratch their cheeks. Um well. Naruto starts but Ganta finishes we kinda, sometimes sneak around and go to the shinobi library. They look at him with embarrassed looks as Sarutobi looks back at them before he starts laughing. The boys laugh nervously wondering what's up. So wait let me get this straight, you two found a way inside that library? They nod slowly. The Hokage snickers before getting Abbott serious. You know that's grounds for punishment. They pale and shake their arms and hands in defense. We didn't know. Naruto panics. Yeah honest. We just found the place and wondered what was inside. Ganta adds to it. Sarutobi smiles before he waves his hand in a dismissive manner. It's fine boys. You didn't know. However it's impressive you even managed to get in. The boys nod before Sarutobi continues where he left off. Anyways your mother is the Red Death. And I would tell you more but you probably know already. However what you don't know since it isn't in the records is that the Uzumakis, like the name Akazes, had their own Kekei Genkai. The name Akazes is called Metal Manipulation. The Uzumakis is called Blood Release. You two haven't unlocked the second one yet. The boys were absorbing everything being told. Now your parents left me their wills and other things along with how to master the Kekei Genkais. I will give them to you but you can't tell anyone all that has been told of today. They nod at that. However if you want to train, there is an abandoned training field in the forest behind the Hokage Monument. You can use that as much as you want and don't worry, I will have some of the Anbu that know of your heritage watching you too okay? The boy nod in understanding. GG did they leave us a house or something? Naruto asks. Yes but I can't give that to you just yet. Not until you're older since you know the reasons for that. They nod sadly at that. I have a request GG. Gonda says. Sarutobi looks at him. Can we start the ninja academy soon? Naruto nods eagerly to that. Yeah we wanna be ninjas gg. Sarutobi smiles and nods. Alright boys. I'll have you start soon but it will take some hard work. They nod and jump off their seats celebrating. Sarutobi smiles seeing this and grabs some papers, writing down their info so they can start soon. In the back of his mind though, he knows he can't tell them of what happened that day yet. Not until they have matured a bit more and are ready. 
however even the boys have their own secrets since they know about what is in Naruto. They know the reason why they are hated by the village but they decided to wait until their GG came forth with it. The next few years will be interesting for these three and the rest of the village. Chapter 3 Same Day After their conversation, Sarutobi hands the boys all he promised them including an SSA, silence, secure, and apprehend, sealed to put on their door of their apartment. He told them it's good for stopping anyone that isn't them from getting in, and even if they do, will end up trapped and knocked out. Also no one will be able to neither hear them from the outside nor see them. It's one their mother made and is very popular. All they have to do is apply both of their chakras into the seal and it would activate. It would only work for the ones who used it the first time. After that, if they wanted, they could let anyone else add their chakra but only if the boys added their own again at the same time. The boys headed to their apartment, ignoring the looks they got while they were thinking about everything today. So when do you think he will tell us? Naruto asks in his mind. Well I don't know bro. He probably thinks we might not be ready for that bit of news. Gonda replies and sighs inwardly. I just hope that is the reason and nothing else. They both walk home with a lot in mind. Forex Flashback Before the kids turn five, about seven months after Naruto and Gonda were kicked out of the orphanage, both of the boys were walking around, either trying to find food or do something. It was nighttime and they were heading home when they were attacked by a random group of people. The group beat them for an hour until they were knocked out covered in multiple bruises with cuts. They were a bloody mess. The group left proud of what they had done while a nearby Anbu with purple hair and a cat mask spotted the boys. She goes down and picks them up then heads to the hospital, making sure that she doesn't cause more injuries on the way. While that is happening, inside the boys' mind they were both in a place no one knew. Naruto woke up first. He looked around wondering where he was until he saw his brother. Ganta. He screams as he goes to his bro and shakes him. Ganda slowly opens his eyes and looks at Naruto. Uck what happened? He looks around. Aw oh man, don't tell me they threw us in the sewers. Naruto looks around as they both see pipes, varying in different sizes. Um the sewers never looked like this bro. Naruto says as Ganda does another take. You're right but then where are we? He asks as they get up and start walking in a random direction. After what seems like hours of walking, really was more like 10 minutes, the walk into a huge room big enough to fit the Hokage mansion at least twice. Whoa! They both exclaim until Naruto sees some huge bars on one side of the room. Gonda check this out. He says slowly as Gonda turns and looks. What the? What's a huge cage doing here? Gonda asks until they both hear. Come closer. They stop and stand still, a cold shiver going down their spines. But for some reason they take a step forward. Ga what is wrong with our bodies? And who or what said that? Naruto says before they hear closer. The voice they hear isn't exactly friendly. It was deep and evil but for some reason their bodies acted on their own. Before long a huge claw came from the cage and almost crushes the boys. So close. Hey oh well. To what do I owe the pleasure of seeing my jailer and his brother? Naruto and Gonta look at each other before looking at the claw. The claw retreats until they look up and see two pairs of eyes and a huge row of teeth that appear to be smiling. What happens next however is, in a word, reasonable. They faint falling backwards and pass out, cold. The QB sees this and sweat drops. Well not exactly what I expected. Maybe I overdid it. He chuckles at himself at what he just saw. About 10 minutes in the location they are at, the twins wake up and shake their heads. Uck that was a weird dream. Gonda says as he holds his head. Yeah. Naruto says doing the same. That wasn't a dream. Maybe more of a nightmare. The twins open their eyes and look at each other wondering if they just heard that. Yes you two did. Now look up. They jumped up and back before looking up and saw what they saw earlier. Oh man we are in trouble bro. Naruto says. Yeah. Royally screwed. Gana says before they heard the face start to laugh. Oh man you two are funny. Granted you would be but as you can see I'm behind bars. He bangs on the bars to prove a point. The twins nod at that before Gonda asks who or what are you? He said in a scared tone. Naruto just stands there. The face moves down, the row of teeth almost touching the ground and the face speaks me? Why am the QB no Yoko? The boys just look at him confused. This in turn makes QB sweat drop. You don't know who I am? They shake their heads no. QB sighs. Well you are just four year old brats. The boys look at the beast and yell hey we aren't brats and we are four and a half, forgetting for the moment where they're at. QB snickers. Well you aren't huh? The twins shake their heads fast. We aren't brats. You don't even know us. Naruto exclaims. Oh on the contrary I actually do. The boys back off Abbott. What do you mean? Gonta asks. 
What I mean is I know everything about you. You see I'm inside Naruto there. This time they give QB a really confused and stupid look. I forgot I'm dealing with dumb brats. Yes you heard exactly as I said. I'm in Naruto. This is his mindscape. The boys look at each other then QB. So then wait if we are, how come I'm inside too? Gonta asks. Good question. It probably has to deal with your mind link. You mean what we used to talk to each other in our mind? Correct. You have me to thank for that. But why? And why are you in me? Naruto asks. QB sighs again and looks at the boy. Well might as well tell you both the story then. Naruto and Gonta share a look before sitting down and looking at QB with curiosity. For the next hour, in the mindscape, QB tells them everything that happened that day. Except leaving out some details like their parents. Also part of his past, mainly that he was also inside a different person before them, leaving out the detail of who it was. The boys just looked at him with wide eyes. Whoa. They say. That's a lot to take in, Gonda said, but then if you were trapped inside like you are now, why attack the village after being free? QB's face turns into a scowl as he looks at a far wall. I was forced to buy a man in an orange, spiral designed mask with a hole over his right eye. He had used what is called the Sharingan to show me a genjutsu showing me an altered vision of my past. It made me attack the village in rage. After I was captured, I blacked out. QB explains as he closes his eyes trying to forget that vision. Naruto and Gonda just look at him in disbelief. They also showed anger but it was to the man with the mask. Well then it wasn't your fault. Gonda says making Naruto nod. Yeah. So you're not to blame. But if you still want it, I forgive you. Gonta agrees. QB just looks down at them with wide eyes. You what? Are you deaf? We said we forgive you. Want us to say it slower? Gonda says making Naruto snicker. QB couldn't believe it. Here are two children that he could crush like they are flies, forgiving him, a demon of this world. QB was at a loss for words. Hey if you want we can make it up to you. Naruto asks. QB looks at him wondering what he meant. Sure he could ask them to take off the seal but after hearing what they said it wouldn't seem right, even for a joke. How? You can't really do much with me in here. True. Naruto says. Hey wait you said earlier this is Naruto's mindscape right? Gonta asks. QB nods. Hmm well. He looks around then at Naruto. Well how about Naruto changes this place around? I'm sure you don't really want to lie on a cold floor while being in here. Hey yeah. But can I? Naruto asks. Well your brain isn't completely shot and your imagination doesn't suck. Naruto nods before he looks at his bro. Hey are you saying I'm dumb? He he you said it not me. GRR not funny bro. QB snickers at the bickering brothers before answering yes it's possible but you don't have to. The twins look at him. It's not that I have to, I want to. The brothers nod to each other as they start planning. After a couple minutes Naruto closes his eyes. Both Ganta and QB see everything in Naruto's mindscape start changing. The sewer goes away as the floor is replaced with lush green grass. To the left of QB and right of Ganta they see a huge forest like the one that surround Konoha. The opposite direction there is a huge lake. There are fish jumping out of the water while in the forest various animals can be heard. Behind Gondo was a mountain with a huge opening. Inside, even though they can't see in it yet, is a huge hot spring big enough for two cubes. The mountain also connects to the lake and on the side is a huge waterfall. The bars on the cage start to change and become a collar around Kyuubi's neck. Not too loose nor tight as it can change with him should he change shape. Behind Kyuubi is a huge cavern of sorts. Not really a mountain, to Kyuubi anyways, but more of a den for where he can sleep. The floor to the den is made out of the softest fur imaginable while the walls had a homey feel. Naruto finally opens his eyes and takes a look at his work. Wow better than I imagined. Ganta and Kyuubi face fault. What do you mean by that? Ganta yells. Naruto sneakers. Just kidding bro. Ganta narrows his eyes. Not funny. Although it would backfire on you anyways. Yeah yeah whatever bro. Naruto looks at Kyuubi. So what you think? Kyuubi keeps looking around before he looks at Naruto. All this for me? No one has ever done this. Not even my previous jailers. Well I'm not like your previous jailers. I'm Naruto Uzumaki. Believe it. He exclaims. QB chuckles while Gana face palms. I have a hunch I'm gonna hear that more often. QB smiles, and for once not an evil or menacing one, but a real happy one. He then shrinks down changing shape as the boys look at him. They gasp at what they see. QB has turned into his human shape. He stands at over six and a half feet tall. He had a slim build but still showed muscles on his body. His face is that of a fox with long fox ears that stick up and a pointy nose that was black at the tip. 
His hair was long, like Hyashi's, and was the same color of his kimono. He wore a red kimono for men that reached past his knees but not hitting the ground. He has on a pair of black, single-strap sandals. Around his waist are two sheaths that held two katanas, both almost touching the ground as they were three feet long. Behind his back however, nine fox tails that pointed up but moved like the wind was blowing on them. Whoa! QB if you were outside the women would drool for you, I think. I don't know how women think. Ganda says. QB laughs at that and the boys notice his voice changed also but still held power. I'm with you on that Ganta. But I wanna say thanks. The boys nodded with sheepish grins. Aw oh, it's fine QB. Not like we can do more. Naruto says. Actually boys you may call me Kurama. That is my real name. QB is just a name the humans of the past gave me. And actually you can do more. The boys nod what he said at first but get confused at what he says second. Huh? What you mean? Ganta asks. Well how about I teach you how to become ninjas? After all this is a ninja village. They twins look at each other before looking at Kurama and nod. Alright. They say, but what will you teach us exactly? Naruto asks. Kurama looks at them. Well I will teach you the fox style of fighting. Cool. They say as the jump for joy. Kurama just snickers at their antics. We can start tomorrow. Right now you two need to wake up as I have healed you both. They nod at that. So how do we get out? And how can we talk with you again? Also you gotta tell us about the mind link. When we first found out, we freaked. Ganta exclaims. Well to wake up just close your eyes and imagine waking up. To talk just think it, now the mind link best to talk about that later. The boys nod before waving goodbye and closing their eyes, disappearing as they leave the mindscape. Kurama stands there thinking of the boys as he walks to his cave. Those two are something. I'll help out any way I can, more than I do now. I know these two will be great someday. I see a lot of father in them. He looks at the sky as he sees the sun overhead showing its eight in the morning. Naruto is smarter than he looks. Probably cause of his brother. Timing the sun in here with the one in real time. His face becomes a scowl as he walks to his cavern. That masked man will pay. And I'll help the boys defeat him. Forex, Naruto and Ganta arrive to their home. They look around their small apartment seeing everything the way it was before they left. They set their stuff down as Ganta grabs the SSA seal and goes to the door. Following the instructions GG gave them, they apply it to the door, adding their chakra. They see the seal activate, watching blue lines appear on the walls all over their apartment before they disappear. They breathe out a breath they didn't know they held as Ganta goes and prepares dinner while Naruto goes and washes up. After both the boys took turns taking showers, then eating and finally brushing their teeth, they change to their pajamas that match except Naruto has orange and Ganta has blue. They get on their beds and fall asleep, back to back before saying goodnight. During which while their bodies rest outside, inside Naruto's mindscape they train with Kurama in the arts of fox style fighting. He teaches them Taijutsu, Ninjutsu, Kenjutsu, and Genjutsu even if Kurama doesn't have a lot of information on Genjutsu. Mainly it was how to get out of it and detect it. Also he teaches them chakra control and how to use it in many ways. They have been doing this ever since they met the demon fox. Except Sunday since it's good to rest the mind also. Starting tomorrow however, the boys would start the academy then go to the training field that their GG told them about. Yep from now on things would be different. Chapter 4 Time Skip 5 Years Since that day, both Naruto and Ganta have been busy non-stop. The day after they got their parents' wills, they started the academy. Ganta didn't like the way their clothes looked but thanks to Kurama helping them, he altered his own. Meaning using chakra, Ganta changed the colors. Now Naruto was not really against it but didn't really want to do it until he saw what his brother did to his clothes. After Ganta washed up and got dressed, he concentrated his chakra. Turns out that the clothes have chakra laced material meaning they could be altered. He wondered if the Hokage knew but shrugged it off. Using his chakra, he changed the colors on his jumpsuit. Now instead of all blue with orange on the upper shoulder area and waist, there are flames that go from bright orange on the outside to dark red on the inside coming from the end of the sleeves to the elbow and from the waist to mid stomach all around the upper part of the track suit. The pants are similar in which the flames come from the bottom of the pant legs and up to below his knees. The rest stayed the same. Naruto was in awe and proceeded to do the same. Except his flames were dark to light blue. All in all they now looked professional. All they needed were their forehead protectors. And for Naruto to be a bit less of a clown which won't happen, unless on a mission. During the first few days they turned heads, while well their clothes did. Even though they were confident for their first day at the academy, inside they were a wreck. But after some days everything balanced out for them. They learned new things, 
like how boring the teachers were teaching. Naruto tried to stay awake every day while Gana tried to look not bored. Hell even Kurama had trouble staying awake. Lucky for him he could sleep and not be bothered. Afterwards they would head out to the training grounds, after telling the Hokage of course. When they first saw it, it was run down with grass overgrowing, lots of stumps and some fallen trees. Luckily for them Kurama taught them the shadow clone jutsu and in no time the field looked brand new. While that was going on, the Hokage was spying on them with his crystal ball. Let's say he was surprised seeing them use the jutsu. When the Hokage asked them later on, they made up an excuse saying they saw a man in a dog mask doing it and they practiced it. Let's just say said person got a talk and decided to be more careful. During the time in the field, the boys practiced all the things their parents left for them, the fox style taijutsu and kenjutsu, and everyday training exercise that is normal for them but would probably kill low level jonin. Yeah Kurama is a slave driver to the boys during their training. They even got katanas left by their mother. They are similar in length, size and weight. However, and it's probably mother's intuition or something, but their swords are colored in perspective to them. Naruto's is a three foot long katana with an orange blade and a black handle while Ganda's is the same length but with a blue blade and black handle. In the center on both blades on the flat side is a long streak line, zigzagging from the hill to the tip of the blade on both sides like lightning. Naruto's is blue while Ganda's is orange. The same goes for the sheath of their swords. They both practiced with them and thanks to Kurama's help in the shadow clone jutsu, they are close to perfecting their kenjutsu. Also they practice their metal manipulation. Using their father's notes, they found different ways to use it. Like for example they can stretch the metal in a kunai and make it as long as 3 feet. They can also either make it sharp or blunt depending on the situation. Not only that but the metal that it's made of also alters the usage. The denser the metal, the more it can be stretched. Turns out their parents planned ahead and the swords they have are very dense. They can either stretch it to at least 10 feet long or make it at least 3 feet wide. The swords are heavy but they can't really tell because of their keke genkai. If anyone would pick them up, their arms would break. Basically the swords weigh a good 350 pounds. They also bought some specialty made kunai just in case that can be turned into different weapons. They even learn that with enough iron in their system can actually turn their bones to iron and even have blades come out of their bodies. That took a while though since they had to eat other foods, most which they couldn't get unless they asked the Hokage. However all of that were the easy parts of those 5 years. The hardest was blood release. Turns out this Kake Genkai is a lot harder to use. Mainly because there is no chakra usage. The blood is more mind oriented than anything else. Think of it like Gara's sand but without a mind of its own. Basically they needed brain training. It's not like you can make a cut on your body and the blood activates. No they needed high levels of concentration. Like almost cage level. It took a good part of 3 years but they got it down, almost down to the point where the blood activates by either them telling it to or, after getting cuts and bleeding, the blood uses their senses and goes on the defense. They still have problems since the blood could go back in them if they get distracted to a point. That and Kurama's constant healing. The scroll that their mother left told them that this had many uses. From shooting it as a small ball, to swords coming from the body, using it as armor, even using it as whips. It said it was better if you used your hair which is why their mother kept her hair long as seen from the photos they got. All in all these 5 years were busy ones for the twins but they never expected for them to get their first mission even though they weren't ninjas yet. The requirement for graduating is at least 4 years in academy, 2 for orphans for reasons unknown. They both graduated with high grades even both tying for Rookie of the Year at age 9. But all that stopped when the Hokage presented them with a mission. They were there when he told them about it. Flashback. Sarutobi was smoking his pipe as the Uzumaki twins were sitting in front of his desk. They had passive faces but they wondered why they were called. Sarutobi passed them a folder as he spoke. I received some news from your godfather telling me that we might have a spy in our midst. They boys look at him with a scowl. Ganta opens the folder and turns to the first page showing the picture of the man the Hokage thought was the traitor. He showed it to Naruto while the Hokage spoke. His name is Mizuki and we believe that he works for Orochimaru. Their scowl deepens while they read the file on Mizuki. We don't know what he is after but all we have is that he is Chunin level and is a teacher. He started about a week back but doesn't know of you taking the classes. So you want us to keep attending the academy until he makes a move? Ganta says as they both look at the Hokage. That is correct. Think you can handle it? Yes. All we have to do is put on a mask of stupidity and lure him out. Doesn't sound too bad GG. Naruto says as he hands the folder to back to Sarutobi. Well should be easy for you bro since it's not really a mask. Ganda snickers as Naruto face faults. Even the Anbu and the Hokage didn't expect that with all the seriousness in the air and almost fell also. 
Gone to laughs openly while Naruto recovers fast and smacks his bro. That's not funny. He yells as Gana rubs his head. Ow I was kidding man. Sarutobi chuckles at that as the air becomes less tense. Well at least you two know when to mess around, but the air becomes thick once more you have to treat this with utmost care. If he catches wind of it he might run, the boys straighten up and nod. What about our classmates? They might suspect something. Naruto points out. True. Well you could tell them that either our progress was lost or because of the odd number of students that we couldn't make a three Shinon team. Gana says. Sarutobi thinks about it and agrees. I'll use the second. You two are dismissed. Be prepared for the mission. Yes Hokage-sama. They say in seriousness as they shush him out. Sarutobi sighs then turns his head to the worst thing in the world, paperwork. I'm not sure what will end me first, them or this, he said softly. Before he begins, he sees a note that says use the shadow clone jutsu gg. We can't stand seeing you suffer at the hand of that. It was probably created for that in the first place. Signed Naruto and Ganto Zamaki. Sarutobi smiles reading the note and seeing two chibi forms of the boys holding up peace signs. He makes the necessary sign and three clones appear, making them do the work as Sarutobi gets up and walks out the office giving the Anbu the day off. Flashback end. That was three years back. Today the boys are seen running across rooftops heading to the academy before landing on the street near the entrance. They had their masks on, which they didn't really need since a lot of the time they always smiled. But they were used to it since they are on a mission that lasted a good three years so far. They hope it would end soon but for now they bared it. They still had their custom jumpsuits on as they walked into the academy. They stopped at the door to the classroom and sighed wondering if things were different. They knew better but still hoped. They opened the door and walked in. Everyone in the class looked to the door hoping it was their sensei Iruka but turned away seeing the two class clowns. The twins look around noticing Iruka isn't there. Hmm that's odd. Iruka sensei is never late much. Naruto says as Ganta nods. Who knows? He can take care of himself Naruto. We could prank him like we sometimes do but I don't want to see his big head jutsu. Naruto nods at that while they walk up the steps and sit down at a desk they always sit in. It was near the top row, third from the top. They sat down with Naruto on the inside and Ganta in the center. At the window seat sat Sasuke Uchiha, the last of his clan. He was brooding like always but inside he had a small smile knowing these two are like fangirl repellent. Naruto puts his head down while Ganta looks around the room. He sees in various spots their classmates. There is Shikamaru Nara, Choji Akimichi, Kiba Inuzuka, Shino Aburame, Hinata Hayuga, and the rest of the class. He sees Hinata looking this way with a blush that makes him snicker. Hey bro your girlfriend is looking at you. Naruto looks up and sees Hinata. He waves gently as she turns around quickly so he doesn't see her blushing up a storm. Man she has it bad for you. Ganta snickers some more as Naruto glares at him. Not funny. They argue a bit in their minds until they stiffen. Aw crap. They are coming. Everyone in the class knew what Naruto was talking about as Kiba yelled hit the deck. Before covering his ears. His dog Akamaru did the same in the hoodie of his master. Before long everyone could hear shouting as Sasuke, Naruto and Ganto paled. Move it Ino pig. Shut it forehead. Was heard as the doors flew open revealing Ino Yamanaka and Sakura Haruno. The twins shake their heads in disbelief. Why do they always do this? I don't know man. Every day ends the same anyways, Ganda said as they sigh. Sasuke wonders the same as even he lets out a sigh. As if on cue, both the girls rush up to where Sasuke is and demand for the twins to move. Even though they see Naruto as a little brother and Ganta as a big brother, they still get this way around Sasuke. Ganda turns to Sasuke and asks hey Sasuke want us to move? Sasuke looks at him before looking at the window hiding his smirk. No way. Ganta looks at the girls. While well, you heard him, before the girls could retaliate, Iruka walks in and tells the girls to find different seats. They slump but comply as they walk away, not wanting to see his big head jutsu early in the day. The boys had triumphant smirks before turning passive knowing today might be boring like always. Iruka stands in the middle of the classroom as Mizuki enters and stands next to him. Naruto and Ganta look at him with a glare. However they keep it to a minimum so no one catches it before they put on their masks again. Well class today is a special day because today you guys get to do the Janan exams. Which means today is the last day for academy for you all. Iruka tells them. The twins mentally slap themselves forgetting about today. Now I want everyone to follow me. The day is spent testing the kids in kunai and shuriken throwing, daijutsu, ninjutsu, and genjutsu. Back in the class, the final test consists of the kids doing three basic jutsus, henge, kawarimi, and bushin. 
everyone but the twins pass, afterwards they go and sit on the swing with sullen looks on their faces but in reality it was all a ruse to see if their prey would take the bait. They didn't wait long before they felt Mizuki behind them. They turned around and saw him fake smiling as he told them of a secret mission so they would pass. The boys fake smiled at the teacher and heard his plan. Outwardly they had stars in their eyes as they danced for joy while inwardly they were seething. Even Kurama was hating the man. They now knew what he wanted and was not gonna let him get it. So they pretended to go through with the plan and left while Mizuki smirked thinking all is going to plan. They waited till nightfall to put the plan in action. They broke into the Hokage mansion and into the office where the Hokage is in. They walked up to the desk and placed a genjutsu seal on it. Mizuki who stood nearby on a rooftop saw the kids knocking out the Hokage while what was really happening was them telling him everything. After telling him of the plan, the kids left with the scroll and headed to the meeting point. Meanwhile the Hokage rounded up some shinobi and told them the plan. Even Iruka was in on it. At the forest the boys waited for Mizuki to arrive. Everything was in place. After 30 minutes, Iruka arrives and sees the boys. What are you two thinking? Stealing the forbidden scroll. He yells at them. Naruto and Gonta look at their sensei. But we only did it to pass. Yeah Mizuki sensei told us if we did it and learned a jutsu we could become Janan. They said as Iruka pretended to be surprised. What? Why would Mizuki do this? Everything fell in perfect as Mizuki took it in hook, line and sinker. That's simple really. To hit two birds with one stone. I get the scroll to my master and I get rid of the demons all at once. Mizuki said as they see him on a tree. Mizuki why? The boys thought Iruka should get a medal or something for his acting. Why? You know why. You have gone soft Iruka. Especially when you know what happened that day. Suddenly Erika's demeanor changes. Mizuki you know it's forbidden to talk about that day. All the shinobi nearby hear this and knew what he is talking about. About why they are hated? Tell me boys do you know why the village hates you? The boys shake their heads. Mizuki stop. Iruka demands but the twisted face on Mizuki tells him otherwise. It's because you have the QB inside of you. You are the QB. Everyone in the clearing has wide eyes knowing he just broke a big law. Iruka turns to the boys and sees their scared expression. Boys don't believe him. You aren't the QB. Yes they are. Mizuki says, satisfied seeing their faces. Until, really? That's it? Naruto speaks. Mizuki just looks at them with confusion. What are you talking about? Gonta looks at him with an impassive look. Kami you are dumb. To think you are a teacher. Iruka looks at the boys wondering what they are talking about. Guys what are you talking about? They sigh. Well I guess we can't keep it a secret now can we? Naruto says as Gonta shakes his head. Nope. Might as well tell them. Inside the mindscape, Kurama was laying in his cavern watching this. Oh man these two are good. Mizuki and Iruka. Along with everyone there look on wondering what they are talking about. Mizuki you were badly informed, well not really your fault. Simi and Gonta already know of that. Everyone gasps at that. Why? Because we met Kyubi. If everyone wasn't surprised before, they are now. Even Sarutobi watching from his crystal ball falls off his chair. And he's actually cool. Has lots of stories to tell. He even knows some jokes. Gonta speaks up this time. So if you thought that little tidbit was gonna get us, you are sadly mistaken. They smirk while Iruka lets go of the breath he was holding while Mizuki was seething. He looks down before he laughs maniacally. You expect me to believe that? Naruto shrugs. Believe what you want. All we know is you are not going anywhere. Ganta nods to that as they walk in front of Iruka and take a defensive stance. Mizuki looks at them with a twisted look. Oh now I look, the kids think they can take me on? I'm a chun and you brats. They keep their stances as they look at him. So? We can kick your ass. Gonda says. Mizuki had enough and grabs one of his huge shuriken on his back then throws it at them. Then try to get through this. He yells as the shuriken heads to them. Iruka and the other shinobi gasp as they go to move but before they could, they see something unexpected. The shuriken makes it to the kids but instead of piercing them, Gonda grabs one of the points with one hand and stops the shuriken cold, bending the metal with his fingertips. Mizuki can't believe his eyes as this brat caught the huge weapon. He does it again with his other one but same result as Naruto catches that one. Mizuki is all in all, in shock. He looks closely and sees something else. There is no blood. How? He asks himself as the kids stand down and look at him. Well not expecting that huh? Almost as much as this. Gonda says as he snaps his fingers and ninja wire goes and wraps around Mizuki, trapping him. What the? A trap? Gonta nods. Yep. Well seems like we didn't need the backup plan.
Mizuki looks at him wondering what he meant until he is surrounded by ten shinobi. He gasps but then notices the huge scroll on the floor turn to smoke. His eyes bulge when he sees Iviki standing there. Two words go through his head. Aw shit. The twins look at Iviki and smile sheepishly. Well guess everything went too well. Sorry you didn't get to fight Iviki-san. Naruto says. Iviki smirks but shrugs. Hey it's alright Gaki. At least we caught the traitor. He makes a sign as one of the shinobi knocks Mizuki out cold with a neck chop. By the way, is it true? The twins look at him and nod. Yeah. We found out before we turn six. I know I know we should have told Gigi but he should have told us first, Gata said as Iviki sighs. Iruka walks up to them. Well as long as you both talk to him about it then it should be fine. We know Sensei. He is probably watching us through his spy ball anyways. Well see you later then Iviki. Have fun with the traitor. Naruto says as Iviki laughs and nods, leaving via Shushin as so do the other shinobi. The twins look at their sensei and smiling sheepishly. So what now Iruka sensei? Gonta asks. Well close your eyes. The twins look at him then each other but shrug and close their eyes. Okay open them. They do and notice nothing different except that Iruka has no forehead protector. Congrats boys, you both pass. They gasp and touch their foreheads feeling their forehead protectors. Naruto with Erika's on his forehead. Yes we pass. They say out loud as they pose. Iruka laughs as he smiles. Come on let's get you two some food to celebrate. They nod and walk out of the forest, heading to Ijirakus. Chapter 5 That night, the boys and their sensei make it to Ijirakus and head inside. The boys sit on the bar stools they always sit in while Iruka sat next to them. Ayane walks out and sees the boys. Ayame Nechan. They greet their sister figure as she smiles and greets back. Hey boys. So the usual? She asks as they nod. Actually I'm treating them so get whatever boys. You earned it. Iruka says. Ayame looks confused and looks at the boys. We got our forehead protectors. They say in unison and point to their foreheads. She smiles and nods. Congrats you too. Kosan the boys are here and they want their usuals. Ah oh, by the way want you want Iruka-san? Iruka looks at her. Ah uh, give me two bowls of miso. She nods and heads back telling her father the order. Iruka looks at the boys. So you two learned of you know who that young? Yeah. It happened when a group of people beat us up until we were unconscious. Although we were surprised that I can enter Naruto's mindscape thanks to her mind link. Ganda says. Mind link? Yep. Me and Ganda can talk to each other through our minds. Naruto answers as Iruka nods. Huh. That's handy. Wait. Is that how you two could evade me and other people? They scratch their heads nervously. Maybe. They say innocently. Iruka shakes his head as Tuchi and Ayane walk out with their orders. Iruka gasps seeing the many bulls for the twins. He looks at them with a glare. Hey you said you were treating us so you kinda walked in on the Iruka sensei Ganda points out. Iruka sighs and nods. Their bulls are put in front of them as the boys and their sensei start eating. By the time Iruka finished one, the boys finished ten. He looked at them in disbelief but shrugged it off knowing how they get. You two aren't in competition are you? He asks as he starts his second bowl. The boys look at him as they eat. Yep. They say as they eat more. They stop at their fifth tenth bowl. Hey Iruka sensei I was wondering. Ganta begins. Iruka looks at him wondering what he wants. Well since we passed, what teams are we in? I mean me and Naruto will be the only two out since we are down one Janan. Ganta looks at him. Are we gonna have to repeat again? Iruka thinks about this as everyone looks at him. Hmm you're right, I didn't think about that. Well I will ask Hokage-sama about this. They nod as Naruto looks at Ayane. So anything new with you one each aunt? She giggles and shakes her head. No Naruto-kun. Although we should tell you next week we will be gone at least a month. She and her father brace themselves. What? What you mean? Naruto ask, Ganta looking at them nervously. You can't be gone that long. Who will we go to for ramen? He asks, both he and Naruto with anime tears. Everyone else sweat drops at that. Ah uh, well it's our annual time to go and keep our skills in check. Well for Tosan anyways. He even promised me that I can start in the art of noodles. You do know this even though I still have to remind you, she said looking at the boys. They go from anime tears to stars in their eyes. Art of noodles? Sounds awesome. Wish we could go with you though. Ganda says. Well that means we will have to eat here every day until they leave. Naruto says. Ganta agrees and both dive into their bowls. Well then that would be for the next three days, Tushi says. They look up and nod as they eat. They finish and demand for more. After some more talking, and eating, the boys and Iruka walk out. 
The twins with happy stomachs and Diruka with anime tears holding his empty wallet. That's the last time I say eat whatever you want of these two. He thought as he looked at them smiling. But it's worth it. So boys I guess I'll see you tomorrow? They nod and wave to their sensei as he waves back, walking to their destination. Forex. Next day, the twins are moving about in their home getting ready for their last day in academy. They have their jumpsuits on, their forehead protectors, their katanas on their right sides and their kunai pouch on their left legs. They also both have scrolls on their backs that are medium in size, reaching from their necks to bottom of their backs at an angle. They ate their breakfast and headed out, making sure to put up their security seal. They jumped through the rooftops heading as fast as they could but still decided to be a last in their class. They make it to the academy and walk in heading to their classrooms, stopping at the door. They shake themselves out of their jitters and open the door. Inside was everyone that passed as they looked at who walked in. They wondered why they are there until Kiba spoke up hey what are you two in here? You didn't pass. The twins looked at him with passive faces and rubbed their bridge of their nose. Kiba is your eyesight bad or something? Naruto asks as they point to their forehead protectors. The class laughs as Kiba moves down in his chair trying to hide. Let's just say something happened last night and leave it at that. Gonda says as the class nods. He looks around. Ah uh, where are the two loudmouths? Some shrug while others have no clue. Ha huh, probably arguing with each other before getting here. Naruto says as they begin to walk up the steps. Sasuke however stops them. Give me those swords dobes. They would be better with an elite. The boys shake their heads at that as Naruto and straps his and holds it out. Really? Then can you hold it up? He said as Sasuke grabbed it but when Naruto lets go, he drops down, the sword pinning his hand. Og what did you do? Sasuke demands. Naruto kneels down and picks up his sword like it's nothing. I didn't do anything. Our swords weigh 350 pounds but only we can lift them and use them, he said as they walk up the stairs and sit on the desk. Everyone gasps at hearing that and whisper to themselves. Sasuke gets up and walks to where he was and sits down grumbling until the door bursts open and there stands the two banshees of the class, screaming at each other. Kiba, Akamaru, Naruto, and Gata cover their ears, the two latter wondering why. The girls rush up the steps and stop by the desk the twins and Sasuke are at. Move I wanna sit by Sasuke-kun. No I do pig. Shut it forehead. Lightning flashes between their eyes as everyone sweat drops. The twins sigh looking at them. Can you two just stop? It's too early. Besides he doesn't have an interest in two bickering girls. Ganda says. And aren't we friends? I mean you two treat us like brothers. Naruto points out. Yes but I wanna be by Sasuke-kun. Sasuke-kun comes first. Sakura says as Ino agrees, before it could escalate, the door opens again and Iruka walks in. He sees the girls. Sakura, Ino, stop bothering the boys and find different seats. He tells them. The girls slump their shoulders and walk away while the boys sigh and say in a low voice. Thank you Iruka-sensei. Now before we begin I wanna say again congratulations you all for becoming Janan, although I might be seeing most again since there is a second test. Iruka says, keeping that last part to himself. The class cheers while some nod in approval and others sit there silently. Now time to pair you guys up. First, Team 1. Unimportant, Team 7 will be Sasuke Uchiha, Sakura Haruno, and Ken Aburame. Your sensei is Kakashi Hatake. Sasuke groans while Sakura cheers. The boy named Ken sat there impassive. He was like Shino except he was a bit shorter and his coat was black instead of gray. Team 8 will be Hinata Hayuga. Kiba Inuzuka, Akamaru, and Shino Aburame. Your sensei is Kuren Ayuhi. Kiba cheered with Akamaru, Hinata sighed since her crush wasn't on her team, and Shino was, well Shino. Impassive. Team 9 is still in circulation. Team 10 will be the new Inoshikacho trio. Your sensei is Asuma Sarutobi, Shikamaru sighed and mumbled troublesome, Kuji was eating some chips, and Ino just sat where she was in shock. I have Lazy and Chubby on my team? She looked at Sakura who was giving her a victory sign, and slumped down crying anime tears. Now Naruto and Gonta Uzumaki, your team is a surprise. The class looked at Imad before turning to the twins. They looked at Iruka with narrowed eyes. Iruka sensei you know we don't like surprises. Gonta states. This one you will. Iruka says with confided but in the back of his mind, he was sweating. Well we better or you will be a prank target for a week. Naruto says with a mischievous smile. The class looks at Iruka and prays for him knowing how these two get. Iruka really sweats as he walks to his desk and sits down. Yeah well anyways the rest can take an hour break until your senseis come. Well more like a 3-4 to four hour break for team 7 since Kakashi-san is late for everything. 
Gonda says making Team 7 wonder if that is true. None of the class moves, except to sit with their new team, since they want to know about this surprise. The twins stand on the back wall furthest from the door with their heads down and eyes closed. About 10 minutes pass until the door opens. A girl walks in and looks around. She is around the same height as Sakura but the way she carries herself says not to mess with her. She has the brightest blue eyes on her heart-shaped face, same color as Naruto's. She has light skin with light gray hair, almost white, that reaches to her shoulders. It was smooth, covered by a soft-looking hat that covered most of the upper part of her head. She has on a short blazer that is black and tied below the neck by red locks shaped in an X. It opens up below her cleavage. Under the blazer is a red tight shirt that reaches past the blazer but stops above her belly button. She has on a red skirt with black lines crisscrossing each other, same as her hat. It has two straps, one going over her shoulder, the other hanging to the side. She also has on boots with medium-sized heels that cover past her knees stopping just short of her skirt. There are fishnet stockings under them. On her hands she has fingerless gloves but the one on her left hand stretches past her wrist and goes to her elbow, looking like her heeled boots and on her right wrist is her Hittite 8 that is in red. On her right side is a katana the same length as the twins however at the end it has a bigger curve. Her name is Elisa and she is one not to mess with. Some of the guys are looking at her with either lust or confusion while the girls, are looking at her with envy, jealousy and or awe. Elisa looks around seeing the looks she gets great. All I see are brats. None of these kids better be on my team, especially when I said I didn't want one anymore. She keeps looking until she spots the twins at the back. Gonna-kun? Naruto? At hearing their names, the boys look up and see her. Got to get wide eyes. I-chan? Elise and A-chan. Naruto exclaims. Before they could do anything, a blur passes by the class and Gana gets tackled to the floor, kissed by Elisa. One word goes through the minds on the class. Fast. What are you two doing here? She asks as she sits up. Gonta nods dumbly not hearing the question. He shakes his head as Naruto snickers. Well I would ask the same but ah uh, chan we are in and he coughs awkward position. He says with a blush as Elisa notices and blushes herself before jumping up. Gonta gets up and they both dust themselves off as Naruto keeps snickering. Gonta sees this and smacks his head. Stop snickering Naruto. Anyways why are you here? Gonta asks as Naruto rubs his head. Damn it that hurt. Elisa giggles. Well I'm here for my new team. Gonta nods before realizing. Wait. He looks at Iruka. This is the surprise? Iruka nods as he snickers, seeing their reaction. Alright. Well this surprise is fine by me. All three cheer until Naruto stops. Wait. I'm Elisa Nechan who is your sensei? Gonta looks at him until he pales remembering. Aw crap. No 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 no. Gonta tries to run but gets grabbed by Elisa. Let me go. I don't want to die young. Everyone sweat drops at the comical scene until Naruto asks. What's wrong bro? What's wrong? What's wrong? Her sensei is Anko or did you forget? Naruto pales and does the same, well tries. All men let us go Nei-chan. I don't want little me cut off. At hearing that all the guys cover their legs. Iruka just looks at them. What is wrong with you two? Before they could answer the door opens again, revealing what the boys dread most. They hide behind Elisa as she sighs but chuckles knowing what they did, even if it was an accident, so they say. Anko looks at Elisa. Hey did you find your team? She nods and reveals the shaking twins. Anko smirks and casually walks to them. Oh Naruto-kun. Gonta-kun. Iruka-sensei you will pay for this. Seeing they are caught, they shush in a way in a mist of blood. Anko pouts as Elisa snickers while the class is, lost. Iruka shakes his head. Do I need to know? Well if you do the reason they are like that if because of a prank gone wrong. Elisa says as Iruka shakes his head sighing then looks at Anko. Wait it wasn't when your hair was dyed green was it? Anko grows a tick mark before she laughs in a twisted way. Pretty much. They say it was accidental and meant for someone else but doesn't matter. I will get them in now since I'm their sensei. She left it off at that. Everyone shook their heads knowing those two would be in a lot of hurt. Well I'm gonna go. Later Iruka-san. Anko says before she disappears in a leaf shushin and Elisa disappears in a red mist similar to the boys but a darker red. The class just looked at awe before Sasuke spoke up. Iruka sensei what was that? That is a technique called shushin. It will be a while before you all can learn it. This time Kiba spoke up. But the twin dobes did it. How? Iruka looks at the ceiling. Well that's because those two are, in a word, unpredictable. Everyone agreed to that and the rest of the day for them went normal. Except for Team 7 who had to wait 3 hours. Also Iruka who got covered in paint 10 minutes after the twins left, 
making the class laugh, forex, speaking of them, we find them tied up on the roof of the academy after being caught after seeing their hokage about something. Uck let us go on Kosan. We said sorry. Like a ton of times. Naruto says as Ganta agrees. Oh calm down you two and be like Elisa. Elisa sat next to the boys as she snickered at their predicament. That's because she's used to you and doesn't threaten us to cut our you know what's. Ganta exclaims. Well then I guess you two will stay there tied up. Besides from now on I'm your sensei so you two are stuck with me. Ganda and Naruto slump down. Fine. Anko snickers. Okay I will let you loose but no running away. Yes Anko sensei. They say, but only if you don't threaten us and at least accept our saris. Naruto says slash yells. Ganta agrees making Anko sigh. Fine. Elisa cuts them loose as they sit on the ground, rubbing their wrists. A little tight I chan. Sorry Ganta kun. She kisses his cheek and giggles. Anko smirks seeing all this. Okay enough of the lovey dovey crap. Aw is Anko jealous? Ganta asks as the three Janan snicker. Anko twitches her eye and grows a tick mark. You wanna be tied up again? Ganta waves his hands in defense. Kidding, Naruto keeps snickering. And you can't laugh since you haven't asked out Hinata. Naruto stops and looks down in gloom. Ganta and Elisa laugh more. Not funny. Naruto pouts. Anyway, let's get down to business. Usually we do introductions in groups but since we all know each other it won't be necessary. The three kids nod. Good now Elisa here already took the real Janan test but I wanna see how she works with you too. Ganda and Naruto tilt their heads to the side. Real Janan test? So that's why the tests seem too easy. When students graduate they always form a group of three Janan and one Jonin. So I'm guessing this is about teamwork right? Ganda deduces as he and Naruto looks at Anko. Correct Gaki. So now I will have you three work in teams. Oh this will be easy since us three already work well. Naruto states before Gonta looks at him with an are you stupid? Look. Uh did you forget how Anko sensei can get? I bet we have to do something out of this world. Anko smirks an evil smirk. Oh yes you will. He the test is. She waits to build up anticipation. To take Kakashi's Icha Icha book from him. The three kids sit there speechless before Naruto speaks. Yeah that might be harder that you think Anko sensei She looks at Naruto. Oh and why? Don't you want to be ninjas? It's not that. It's, well, we already did that a long time ago. Twice in fact. Ganda says. Anko and Elisa look at them with a surprised look. The boys scratch their heads sheepishly. It's true. And he's wary of us. We haven't tried again after failing two other times. He is protective of his books. Ganda says. Anko recovers and thinks. Well now you have Elisa with you so he's not expecting that. Well he will, probably, but they don't have to know. Now he won't be here for another three and a half hours to pick up his students so you have until that time to grab it. If you don't before he meets up here with them, which he will, then you fail. The trio look at each other and nod. Alright. But only us if we do which we won't. I don't want Ai-chan going back cause of us. Ganda says as Naruto agrees. Anko nods too. Yeah obvious. So what's your plan? The boys look at each other before huddling up together and telling them of their plan, and two backups. The girls look at them with smirks on their faces. Oh man that sounds devilishly good. You two are the pranksters of hell. Anko says as the boys bust out their smiles. Aw oh, thanks. We try. Naruto says. Okay I will go to the Hokage and tell him so I, and maybe himself also, will use his crystal ball. And we will head back to class after everyone except Team 7 leaves. And then we commence the plan. Ganda says as they all nod in agreement and leave their own way, Forex. After the other teams leave, Anko heads to the Hokage to tell him of the plan while Team Anko goes back to the classroom. They see that Sasuke, Sakura, and Ken are there doing their own things. Ken and Sasuke notice them while Sasuke speaks up. What are you three doing back? He sees them with smiles on their faces and tells them of their plan just not telling them about the second test. Team 7 has smiles on their faces and agree with them. So basically you are doing this to teach him a lesson and get back at him? Sakura asks. Yep that's the plan. We will set up and I'll place some weapons for you to use. Ganda says as Sasuke has a smile on his face. This should be fun but it better not backfire on us. It won't Sasuke. He will find out why. We do it to him a lot anyway so it's no biggie but he won't really expect it since we will be in hiding. That and the last prank. Now go back to what you were doing and let us do our thing. Naruto says as the two groups nod. Over the next hour they set up as Team 7 just looks at them in awe seeing them set up everything. It consisted of a lot of complicated pulleys, wires, and a whole mess of things. 
they wondered how or where they even got all this stuff. Once everything was in place, Team Anko hid in place thanks to Elisa's genjutsu skills. Now what's left was to play the waiting game. The boys and Elisa had the patience since they knew how late Kakashi can be while Team 7 are starting to realize how late he can be. About 3 hours pass until, he's coming. Act cool. Elisa says making Team 7 straighten up. The door opens as they see their sensei step in. He makes it as far as one step and before he could say anything, two erasers come down and poof in front of his face. He coughs and before he could react, a sequence of pulleys and wires being pulled could be heard before some springs activated. He gets covered in paint of all colors while water, which had tons of glitter in it, is poured on him. Now! Gonta yells as he, Naruto, and Elisa appear in with Sasuke, Sakura and even Ken all start throwing water balloons filled with water, paint, tomato paste and even catnip for odd reasons alone. While that is going on, Elisa moves in under a genjutsu and takes his book from his pouch all in a flash. After about a five-minute barrage, all stops. The smoke and dust clears before the kids see a completely covered Kakashi and all the stuff they threw. They start laughing as Kakashi sighs wondering why this happens to him, even though he did bring it to himself. Before he can speak again, some more smoke erupts near him and covers him. When the smoke clears, the kids laugh even more, even Ken who is banging on the desk. Kakashi is standing there covered in feathers making him look like an overgrown chicken, beak and all. After a while of laughing, the kids straighten up. Hey Kakashi-san. Gana says Kakashi looks at them and sighs. I knew you two had to be behind this. But putting my team on this? Yeah well you know the pranks can never stop after what you've done. Naruto says making Team 7 wonder what he did. So you gonna stop arriving late? Gonta asks. Kakashi sighs and I smiles. Nope. You three meet me at the roof in 10 minutes. I need to get this off. He says as the kids shrug. Well see you guys later. Let us know if you want to do this again in the future. Naruto says as everyone agrees with a smile. Team Anko shushions out, Forex. While all this was happening, in the Hokage's office there was a roar of laughter. Inside, Anko and Sarutobi are on the floor crying from laughter after seeing what they saw. Also inside is Gurunai, Asuma, some of the other Jonins that got teams and Jiraiya popping by to make a report. All were laughing at the expense of Kakashi. Even the Anbu. Oh man I knew it was gonna be good but it was too good. Anko says between breaths as they all tried to catch their own. Asuma wiped away an imaginary tear. We will not him live this down, everyone agreed as Anko straightened up. Well I guess my team passed. I will meet them then come back. Anko says as she leaves, Forex. On the rooftop, Anko appears as she sees her team of genins waiting for her with Elisa holding up the book. Mission accomplished Anko-sensei. Anko smirks with a bit of a giggle still remembering what happened as she catches the book Elisa had. Good job you three. You pass. They nod with a smile. Hey by the way you two get your IDs yet? Naruto and Gonta look at her with a nod as they show her their IDs. Yep just before you caught us earlier. Gonta says. Okay then meet me at training field 44 tomorrow at 8 sharp. See you later Gakus. Anko shushins out as the kids look at one another. So what now? Naruto asks. Well let's get some food and catch up with each other and maybe see how the other teams are doing. Gonta suggests as they all nod and head to Ichiraku's. Forex. About half an hour later in the Hokage's office, everyone waits for Kakashi to arrive as they all talk to themselves. The door opens to reveal a somewhat clean Kakashi. There is still some paint and feathers on him making everyone snicker. Hey chicken head, Asuma said making the whole room laugh again. Kakashi sighs as he walks forward. You all saw? They nod. Let me guess, you won't let me live it down? They shake their heads at that. Not until the next prank. By the way are you ever gonna tell us what you did? Anko asks. Kakashi looks down and sighs for the umpteenth time. No. Anko snickers. Fine fine. The Hokage clears his throat. Anyway let's get down to business. Tomorrow everyone will meet here after they administer their test to see who has teamwork on their team. Except for Anko after what we just saw. He says with a snicker. Everyone dismissed. Kakashi reaches into his pouch but finds something missing. He gasps and bulges his eye until he sees Anko holding up an orange book. Looking for this Kakashi? He looks at her with a glare. How never mind. He says before realizing about the true purpose of the prank. Anko gives him his book as she shushens out holding up a peace sign. Everyone else leaves as Kakashi sighs looking at the Hokage. Do you think it's a good idea having the twins with her? Sarutobi shrugs. A I know you wanted them but the council had other ideas. Besides Elisa also needs it since the last two teams she was on either passed or died in the Chunin exams. 
plus you know Ongto can relate to them. And besides you did train them a bit before, Kakashi nods remembering. Do you think she will this time? She should have the first time but that was my mistake after giving the boys their mission. But you and I both know that once they start the exams, we can't do anything until afterwards. Saru Tobi says as Kakashi nods. Yeah that is true but we can hope for the best, he said with an eye smile. Saru Tobi nods and smiles back. Yep and train them hard. Now go home and try to get rid of the feathers, he said as he laughs a bit at the last part while Kakashi nods slowly and shushins out. Forex. Meanwhile with the twins and Elisa, we find them looking around for the other teams. They spot Team 10 and ask them if they would like to eat together. They nod and, after Ina drags Shikamaru with them, head to find the other teams. They find Team 8 near a tree with Hinata and Kiba talking, well more like Kiba trying to ask Hinata out and her shooting him down, harshly. And Shino being, Shino. The small group comes up and asks them if they want to join. They agree although Hinata blushes up a storm seeing Naruto. After that they head to find Team 7 although they see just Sakura walking alone. Hey Sakura. She looks up seeing the twins waving at her. Huh? Oh hey guys. She walks up to them and greets them. Hey want to eat with us? Uh yeah I guess so. Great. Let's go to Ijirakus. Naruto says as the teams head to eat. They make it and all sit down on the stools. The twins sit on their spots with Elisa next to Ganta and Hinata next to Naruto. Hinata looks like she might faint but composes herself. Well tries to anyways. They all order different ramen as they begin to talk about random things for almost half an hour. So now we are ninjas huh? Naruto says as the rest nods. So did you guys take the test yet? The group shakes their heads. No. What's it about anyways? Sakura asks. Well it's about to see who is what it takes to be ninjas. Ganta answers. The group looks at him confused. What you mean? Kiba speaks up. Think about it. The test in the academy was way too simple. All it showed is if you can throw with accuracy and if you have good chakra control. That doesn't mean we can be ninjas through that. Ganda says again before Shikamaru realizes. So basically this test is to see how well we can use it in teams? Correct. This test is about teamwork. I mean when you start as a Janan, it's in groups of four with three Janans and one Jonin. Didn't you guys notice? Elisa says. The group looks at each other then at them. So this is to see how well we can work with each other? Sakura asks. Elisa nods. But wait you two didn't pass that exam so how can you know about this? Kiba says to Naruto and Ganta. They look at each other. Should we tell them? Well it's not like we can get in trouble. Besides we do anyways so what can this do? Ganta says to his brother then turns to them. Well first we already passed our test. The others gasp. Sakura remember earlier? Naruto says as she nods then laughs. You mean the prank? She asks laughing. Yep. We were told to get something that Kakashi has on him and we succeeded. Ganda says proudly. Everyone nods but turn to Sakura who is still laughing. What is so funny though? Ino asks. Sakura straightens up habit and tells them what happened as Ayane and Tuchi bring out their food. After she finishes everyone breaks out laughing, some falling on the floor. Oh man. That's great. Choji says. My sides, they hurt. Hinata says as they try to compose themselves. They all wipe an imaginary tear as they finally get over it. Wow to think you three could do that to Kakashi-san. What did he do though? Ayami asks as everyone starts eating. Well it would be best not to say. It's embarrassing and earned him a thousand years of pranking. Let's leave it at that. Ganda says as the group look at them in shock, even Elisa. Remind me not to mess with you too. Kiba says. By the way you still haven't told us how you passed the first exam. The twins look at each other and nod then look at them. Ganta puts up a seal on the table creating a ganjutsu that makes it seem like they are talking about something else to anyone passing by. They tell them about their mission, what happened that night about Mizuki and the scroll and everything else, except about Kurama of course. After they are done, everyone looks at them in shock and awe. Wow to think Mizuki is a traitor. Shikamaru mutters as everyone thinks. Yeah well he is locked up and won't be getting out. But don't tell anyone. Especially you Ino. Big mouth. Naruto says. Ino looks at him. What are you talking about? She says with a nervous smile. Oh please Ino everyone here knows you're a gossiper. You better not say anything or you might find your clothes in different mismatched colors. Ganda says smirking as he eats. Ino gasps. You wouldn't. Uh did you forget what they did to Kakashi-san? Shikamaru points out. Ino pales and quiets down. Ganda removes the seal and places it away. What is that? Kiba asks. Oh it's just a genjutsu seal. That way no one could hear us if anyone was snooping around. 
Gonda says, the last part of it loud as he looks behind him. You four forget me and Naruto are sensors right? The group wonders what he means by that as they see their senseis come out. Yeah yeah you caught us. Anko says as she smirks, we are just checking out our little Janan. That's so wrong? Only you can make it wrong Anko sensei. Naruto points out. Kurinai, Asuma, and Kakashi snicker at that. Hey not funny. Or do you want training to be painful for you too? The boys shrug. You can try, they said giggling. Anko gawks at that. Okay for you two training. Will. Suck. She says as the twins fake cower. Oh no, they said pretending to be scared. Anko smirks smugly as the twins look at Kakashi. So I see you got very clean Kakashi-san. Gonda says as Kakashi's eye twitches. Mom I you two got me good just don't do it again. You can't count on that or did you forget the thousand years of pranking we said? Gonta reminds him making his shoulder droop habit. Just remember we will always get you. But for now we will wait until everyone that knows forgets about the whole little chicken prank, Naruto said as everyone snickers at that. He's right chicken head. Asuma says before everyone starts laughing again. Kakashi cries anime tears and shushins out. Everyone calms down after seeing him gone. Well boys and girls we will see you all later. Johnny. Anko says before she, Kurinai, and Asuma shushin out as well. The group looks at each other as Gana pays for their meals. Well I guess this is where we part ways huh? Everyone nods before they wave goodbye and head their separate ways. Gonda and Elisa afterwards after a heated kiss which earned them some cat calls from various people. Elisa walks away with a smile as Gonda stands there looking stupid happy. Naruto sighs and grabs him dragging him away. Everyone heads home as the sun sets and they prepare themselves for what comes tomorrow. Chapter 6 The following day, as the day begins, everyone in the village prepares. The twins wake up and do their routine. Afterwards they head out to meet with their sensei at training ground 44. When they get there, they greet Elisa as she greets them back with a wave to Naruto and a kiss to Gonda. Anko arrives right after as she grins. Morning Gakus, hope you slept well because now it's time for training, Anko style. The genins nod as they look to the forest of death. So this is the forest of death. Should be fun. Naruto says as Gonta agrees. Elisa smirks and holds Gonta close. If you get scared I'll protect you Gonta kun he looks at her. Ha ha, any more of that and no more heated kisses. She pales at that. I'm just joking babe. She pouts as he smirks. Me too. Both Anko and Naruto snicker. So what kind of training shall we be doing? Naruto asks. Anko grins evilly. Oh this and that. She says slowly. The boys shake their heads. Yeah yeah. Let's go and kick this forest's ass. Calm down Naruto. Best is safe than sorry in here, Gana said. Yep. Yeah, especially since this is my playground. Anko says as she looks at the boys. Oh joy? They say flatly. The team goes and jumps over the fence and run into the forest. The boys hear random animal sounds as they run through the forest floor. They stop at a clearing. Okay boys first I want to see how well your chakra control is. So tree walk that tree. Anko says as the boys shrug. They head to two trees and nod to each other. Before they begin. They grab 10 leaves for each hand and start balancing them using chakra as they walk up the tree. Anko watches in awe wondering how they advance this far while Elisa giggles. Anko sensei you can't go that easy on them. They already know tree and water walking. Anko looks at her in disbelief as the boys drop from the tree into the ground. I chan we wanted to surprise her. Spoil sport. Gonda pouts as Naruto giggles. So is that it? I thought it would be harder than that Anko sensei. Anko twitches as she fumes but regains her composure and looks at them with a smile. Well more of a sadistic grin. You want hard huh? Okay then give me 5 sets of 100 push up and sit ups, 3 sets of 50 one handed push ups, 15 laps running up and down the trees you tree walked on and 10 laps around this clearing, she said with an authoritative voice and a smirk. They boys stood there gawking at her while inside they were somewhat impressed. Wow not bad but not really enough for us. Naruto thought in his head. You were right on that part bro. Maybe we should show her our exercise routine. Gana thought back. QB was impassive. Maybe you should. But at least she's trying so we can't fault her for that. The boys pretended to be in disbelief and looked at her. What? Uck fine. Come on let's start. Gana says as Anko has a satisfied smile and looks at Elisa. You do our regular routine. Elisa nods and starts them as the twins do too. 30 minutes later, Anko's face during the exercise had many different looks going from triumphant to disbelief to anger to anime tears. But it ends with her looking at them with wonder, awe and a small mix of anger and somewhat happiness. Elisa snickered right beside her as she knew of their daily exercises. 
Naruto and Gonta stood there looking at them with a smile, very little sweat forming on their toned bodies. They took off the upper part of their jumpsuits and rolled up their pant legs. Elisa tried hard not to jump Gonta then and there. You but how? I mean no fucking way. Anko sputters out and exclaims. The brothers snicker looking at her. What? Naruto asks as Anko just looks at them still wondering how. If you're wondering how, our daily exercises are a lot worse than this Anko sensei. Gonta says as she looks at them dumbly. 10 sets of 500 push-ups, sit-ups, one-armed push-ups on both arms. Naruto starts. 20 laps around a clearing twice the size of this one, each lap going from running to jogging, leaf balancing while having a finger on the ground, and doing half of the push-ups, sit-ups, the one-armed push-ups and the leaf balancing, on water. And all of that with half-ton weights on us. Gana finishes. At hearing that, Anko, breaks. What? How? That can't be possible. Not even my guy does that much. I think. But you too. She just looks at them in disbelief. What? Me and Gana just want to get stronger. At hearing that, Anko just starts laughing. Wow. Well you know what no matter what I do I don't think I can keep up. Well if you want, you can add up to the exercises we just did until you reach that level. Gana says with a smile. Anko nods but before she could say anything, Elisa tackles Gonta, finally breaking down. She makes out with him furiously. Gonta Kuni looks so good. She purrs. Naruto shakes his head as so does Anko. Elisa get off your boyfriend. We still aren't done. You can ravish him later, she said as she snickers. Gonda and Elisa blush red as she gets off and he gets up, dusting each other off. Naruto laughs at it before calming down. I think it would be best to water down before we continue. Gonta nods as Elisa can't keep her blush off. The boys go and water down then get their shirts on before heading back to the girls. Okay now it's time to see how well your taijutsu, ninjutsu and genjutsu are. The boys nod before Naruto speaks up. Ah uh, well our genjutsu skills aren't great. All we can do is detect and dispel. Gonda agrees with a nod. Anko thinks about it. Well okay. What's the highest level you can dispel? High B rank, low A rank genjutsu. Gonta answered. Anko nods impressed at that. Okay first taijutsu. So Naruto you first. He nods as he and Anko get into the middle of the clearing while Gonta and Elisa move to a good distance to watch. Anko gets into her snake stance while Naruto gets down on all four into a fox stance. That's new. It's almost like the Inuzukas but slightly different. More fierce and destructive probably. Anko thinks as they stand there. Gonta looks on as he tosses a rock in the center. Both Naruto and Anko see it and as soon as it hits the ground, they go in a blur. If anyone with good eyes could see, they would see these two almost dancing. Both are getting some hits in while dodging most. Anko using either fists or open palms while Naruto had his hands in a claw-like fashion. However Anko got more in since her snake style makes her move her body in odd angles. That and she has more experience but she is still weary. Damn this kid. If I wasn't so flexible, those hits would hit me and cause a lot of damage. This style is about speed and strength and, with the right timing, could do a devastating blow. Anko was panting while Naruto kept going. Man Anko sensei is good. I bet it's from experience and fighting. I wonder if me and you could get this good. Maybe in enough time. Thanks to Kurama we are basically high jonin level but without experience we are at least low to mid level chunin. Gonda says to Naruto. After about 10 minutes, Anko tells Naruto to stop. They both stood there sweating. Hugaki you really gave me a workout. That style is insane. And I'm guessing Gonta is also the same? Naruto nods as he catches his breath. Yeah but he's more cautious and accurate than me. If I fight Gonta in this state, I will be too tired later. Anko looks up at the sky. It's still too early and I want to start them on missions. Even if they are D rank. Oh well, I guess I could rest during that time. Gonta and Elisa walk over to them. You two okay? If you are too tired we can start missions later. Anko waves it off. I'll be fine. Just some rest and water and I'll be right as rain. Well okay you two rest. Me and Elisa will think something to do, just don't go and find a private spot. Naruto says as he and Anko snicker. Gonda and Elisa look at them with narrowed eyes. You know me and Gonda kun aren't at that level. Besides we want to wait. Elisa says and Gonda agrees. Naruto and Anko shrug as they go to a tree and sit by the base. Gonda goes and gets his scroll then takes out two water bottles, handing them to Anko and Naruto. Here drink up. You can check our ninjutsu in what 30 minutes? Anko agrees as Gonta and Elisa walk off. Naruto and Anko drink from their bottles as they look at the trees. 
Manmi and Ganda always wanted to check in here but never got the chance. It's not that bad really. Pretty peaceful. Naruto says as Onko nods. That's why I always train here. But there is a danger element. Mainly the animals and plants. But right now there aren't any here, so we can rest. She says as she looks at Naruto but sees he's already asleep. She snickers. Strange kid. She says as she closes her eyes and rests, Forex. About an hour later, Onko wakes up. To her surprise she woke up lying on the ground. She looks around but then sees and feels something unexpected. She looks at Naruto and sees him next to her with his head in between her breasts. He was still sleeping as from the light snoring but he did have a small smile on his face. She grew a tick mark and was about to hit him when she heard, Hinata-chan. She stopped her hand and giggled. A little Naruto is dreaming of Hinata? Cute. She says giggling as she taps Naruto's shoulder. He stops snoring and wakes up, yawning as he sits up and stretches. Man that nap felt good. Hope so. Although I didn't know you were so bold Naruto-kun. Naruto stops and slowly looks at where he was laying. He stands up quickly, screaming, and puts his hands up in defense. An Onko-sensei. That didn't mean anything. I I think we must have shifted and fell into that position. Yeah that's it, he said shakily and nervously, sweat showing on his face. Onko gets up and smirks. Aw oh, it's okay Naruto but next time buy dinner first. Before he could say anything back, the sound of two people could be heard laughing. Oh man that is way too funny. Oh yeah. It worked perfectly. Prank success. Anko and Naruto look at Elisa and Ganta suspiciously. What you two mean? Well after me and Ganta-kun went to work on our elemental jutsus, we came back and saw you two asleep. So me and I-chan came up with a plan to prank. And it worked, they said as they held up victory signs. However it was short-lived when Anko put out a good amount of killing intent. You mean that was a prank? The two lovebirds hold each other nervously. I it was just a harmless prank. Ganda says as they look at Anko. Anko smirks as the key drops. Hey not bad but don't do it again. I almost hit Naruto. What? Naruto looks at her with bulging eyes. Hey sorry but well you were between my breasts. Hearing that, Naruto blushes red. Ganda and Elisa start laughing again at that. Sorry bro but it was too good to pass up. Naruto pouts at that. Yeah well I'm gonna go and wash off this sweat. He says as he walks away. Yeah me too. Then I will check on your ninjutsu, Anko said. They nod as she walks away while Gante looks at Elisa. Let's get some snacks. I'm hungry. He said as she agreed and went to get something to eat from their ceiling scrolls. Forex. Meanwhile Naruto took off his jumpsuit, only wearing some shorts that are under it. He goes into the water and dives in. He comes up and gasps. Man it feels good. He goes back to the shore and washes his face, getting all the sweat off. Behind him Anko walks up and takes off her trench coat then jumps into the water, splashing Naruto. He screams at that before getting covered by water. What the? Anko sensei, not funny. He yells as Anko comes up. He he sorry Gaki. She says as Naruto blushes. Anko giggles. Ah what's wrong Naruto? She asks, knowing well why he is blushing. Naruto turns away with a blush that could make Hinata proud. I uh, I can see your, um you know. He said as Anko walks up and hugs him from behind, pressing her breasts on his back. Ah oh, what? Don't like them? I it's not that. I it's a well that is private and I shouldn't be looking at them. He said stuttering blushing even more. Anko giggles as she had just sabbed. Well it's fine by me Gaki. After all when the council gets wind of your heritage, you will be put under the CRA. Your brother too. Naruto stops blushing as he looks up at Anko. That's true. We asked Gigi about it and he told us in time it will happen. We don't want it to since he likes Elisa and I like Hinata. He says. He clamps his hands over his mouth at what he said. Anko laughs. Don't worry about that. A good amount of people know you like her and she likes you. He blushes looking down. So anyway why bring up the CRA? Well if what you say is true then wouldn't it be better to be with girls that you trust? Naruto thinks about that. Yeah but he stops as he realizes what she wants. Wait, you want to be part of it? He looks up at her and nods. But why? I mean right now we are teacher and student. And you could do better than me, he said. Anko snorts. Please Naruto you are better than most guys if not all that I know. That and after we fought well I guess something developed, she said with a tint of a blush that Naruto didn't see as he looked back down. Well then I guess but I want Hinata to be the first. Anko nods at that. Of course. Naruto looks side to side and blushes. Um Anko sensei, I can see your nipples, he said softly but she still heard him. So? What wanna see more? 
he blushes and gets a nosebleed. Ayananko sensei, he yelled at her as she begins to laugh. Ah oh, don't worry you will see more but in the future. She goes and whispers in his ear. Well you can see whatever whenever you want though. He blushes more trying not to pass out. Um Anko sensei it might be best to stop before Ganta and Elisa wonder where we went, he said stuttering Abbott as he looked up at her. She looked down and kissed his forehead. Oh you're no fun but okay, she said. Naruto shook his head and tried to get up but couldn't. I meant by what I said Naruto. He blushes as he tries to push her off but instead gets a handful of breasts. She blushes Abbott but giggles trying to hold back a moan. Wow Naruto I didn't know you had it in you. He blushes as he lets go. Anko pouts but gets up and Naruto gets up. He keeps his back to her as she smirks. Still being the gentleman huh? Well I like that. She says as she turns him around so he can get a better look. She leans down and whispers in his ear. All yours from now on Naruto-kun. That does it as Naruto passes out with a stream of blood coming down from his nose. She laughs as she throws him in the water and gets dressed. Naruto wakes up and gets out then dresses as he chases Anko. Meanwhile, Kurama was having the time of his life, laughing his ass off in Naruto's mindscape. Oh man she's good. Holy hell can she seduce and have fun. Naruto you lucky bastard you have found a mate for life. He says as he calms down and thinks of his past, thinking of his past mate. He cries a single tear as he shakes his head. No Kurama what has happened, happened and can't be undone. He thinks sadly as he goes back to sleep. Outside while Anko is being chased, she thinks about her past after seeing Naruto's eyes during the fight. She caught a small glimpse of sadness, something she didn't think would exist in Naruto's happy face. Maybe it's a mask but if you're sad Naruto I'll make you happy. I know all you have is your brother but from now on you have me. And maybe in the future other girls. I just hope you ask Hinata out soon. But from now on you have more people in your life. She thought as they made it back to the clearing. When they made it there, they saw Ganta and Elisa in a meditative pose both holding five kunai in each hand using chakra. Ankh arches an eyebrow as Naruto looks at her. We also made it to that part too and helped Elisa nay with it. She nods in understanding as she clears her throat. They open their eyes as they look at Anko and Naruto. Took long enough. We thought you two were making out or something, Ganta said as Elisa giggles. Naruto blushes as Anko smirks. He wishes. But anyway let's test out your ninjutsu. The three Jinan nod as Anko stands in the clearing while Gana stands on the opposite side of her. Naruto and Elisa jump to a tree branch. Anko slaps her forehead as she remembers something. Wait I forgot. We need to see your elemental affinities. Gana faults while Naruto and Elisa stumble on the branch. You remember that now? Ganta asks slash yells. Anko scratches her cheek with her tongue out. Yeah sorry. Hey, it doesn't matter. We already know. You do? Ganta nods. Hey Kurama should we tell her? Kurama opens an eye, still not over remembering the memory of his past. Well she probably already knows since when you make Chunin you get told of what happened that day. Remember we read about it? We know Kurama but I think Ganta means about you. Naruto says in thought. Oh that. Well hmm I do trust her habit but just about what I taught you and can do. I'll let you know when we can tell her everything. Both the boys nod and cut the connection. You probably know about what is in us and why we are hated, Gana said with spite in the word hate. Anko nods as Naruto continues. Well we actually met Kyuubi. I know. Hokage same told me. Okay well he is the one who taught us our taijutsu, ninjutsu, genjutsu, kenjutsu and made us do that insane exercise. Anko goes wide-eyed. Holy shit that was him? Oh man now I want to really meet him. The Jinan sweat drop at that. Anyway he also showed us our affinities. Naruto and I have high wind since it's our main one while Naruto has water and I have earth. Thanks to QB, we also have a high fire affinity. The only one we can't do is lightning since it's weak against wind and makes it the hardest to learn I know. I have been alive longer than you two. Ganta points at her. Hey you stole my thunder. Why? He cries anime tears as everyone sweat drops. Right. So then let's see your strongest wind. Ganta looks at her sheepishly. You sure cuz um. We aren't exactly a Janan level. Hey I'm a Jonin damn it. Okay. Ganda says as he starts making the signs. This won't be my strongest wind jutsu but it's powered up than the regular version. When he finishes it he opens his mouth and releases a powerful gust of wind. However it was in the shape of a blade, a very long and sharp blade. Anko gasped as she dodged out of the way, the blade barely missing her as only abbot of her coat and hair were sliced off. She looks back and sees that the wind blade kept going cutting through some trees before dispersing. She looks back at Ganda with wide eyes. What the hell was that? She screams out. He scratches his cheek. 
powerful wind wave although it is a blade as you saw. And I did warn you didn't I sensei? Anko nods dumbly at that. True. I'm guessing Naruto can do it too? Yep. Me and Bro can do the same wind techniques and fire techniques. And that isn't our strongest either like I said, Gonda said sheepishly. Then show me that. Uh uh we will wait till the right time. Mainly cause it deals with our father. Anko nods at that but gets wide eyes. Wait you don't mean ah bup 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 no talking about it. Let us keep one secret that only we and our godfather knows about, Gonda said. Fine then show me your strongest earth. Gonda sighs. Really? Anko nods. Fine but be better prepared this time. Anko nods sheepishly. Yeah yeah just do it already. Gonda nods. Fine but get on a branch. Why? He gives her a really? Look. Because it's big and one Jiraiya taught me. Even if I had to smack him stupid and get him away from the hot springs. Frickin' pervert. And it will be not too powerful. Also this isn't my strongest earth, he said as Anko went up into a branch. Gonda did his hand signs and, after raising his chakra abbot, he slammed then down then yelled, Earth release, swamp of the underworld. The section of clearing in front of him changed and started to change into dark mud, signifying the surface changing to a swamp. Any trees inside it sunk down. Anko had wide eyes as she saw the technique until it reverted back, the trees that are inside it sticking out halfway. I can hold it longer and make it bigger but why? There are no enemies here, he said as Anko came down. Why the hell did Jiraiya-sama even show you that jutsu? The Junin sweat drop. Very good jutsu Ganda. Oh thank you sensei. He said in a mocking tone as Anko's eyebrow twitches. Not funny now answer. Because I knocked him out? He said as he scratched his head. Anko violently twitches. That's the reason? Got to backs off. We well I did ask him too. Besides he owed us since he wasn't in our lives much. Anko sighs and nods. Fine. And I'm guessing you have other stronger ones since you said it wasn't that strong. Okay Naruto your turn. Naruto and Ganda switch spots. Okay now you show me your strongest water jutsu, she said as Naruto sighs. Um. Anko sighs. How high? Naruto looks up. Probably to the second branch just in case. And it's not my strongest but it's close. Where in the hell did these two even practice in and how the hell didn't anyone notice? Anko asks herself as she jumps up to where Lisa and Gana are, who are making out. Well we're until Anko smacked them both. Naruto goes and gets his scroll and opens it then poofs out another scroll. He puts the big one back on his back as he tosses their stuff up to Gana who catches it. Naruto releases what's inside the scroll as a ton of water pours out. Quickly he does his hand seals. Water release, great waterfall technique. He yells as the water that came out of the scroll surges and rises up over a large scale and a couple of meters high. Then it streams down like a giant waterfall and turns to a huge wave, covering everything on the ground. It rises up a couple yards before dying down. Anko has wide eyes and her jaw dropped as she looks at Naruto who is now right beside her. Naruto looks at her and closes her mouth. I think the words you are looking for are holy fuck? He asks looking at her. She nods dumbly as she looks down. The water recedes as the ground looks muddy. Well looks like we won't be using that ground anymore. Let's go to a different spot. Gonda suggests as they nod, Anko finally breaking from her stupor. They tree hop for a couple minutes until they find a different terrain. Oh Anko if you're wondering where we did those techniques, we did it in Naruto's mindscape. Gonda brings up. Anko nods. No wonder. Although now part of the forest will be unusable. The three Jinan nod at that. Hey Elisa you've been pretty quiet so far. That's because I have seen those attacks already. Wait you mean that one time when you told me? It was these two that did it? She asks almost yelling. Yes but they did it on a smaller scale. Elisa told her but pouts. It hurt that you didn't believe me. Anko grins sheepishly and scratches her head. Yeah well seeing is believing. That's what she said when we told her but didn't believe us until we showed her. Ganta brings up. Ganta kun. Elisa whines. Anko snickers. Fine but now it's time for your fire jutsus. Fine just don't ask for our strongest. Ganda says as he jumps down with Naruto. Hey I can take it. Not really. Naruto says back. Anko grumbles as the brothers stand together. What are they doing? Well I think they are gonna do a joint attack. Okay. Both the girls look on as the boys do their hand signs then take in a big breath. Together they yell quickly. Fire release. Great fireball technique. As they blow out their breath. Two huge fireballs come out as they collide and become twice the size as it heads to a rock and hits it, burning and melting it before dispersing. Not bad. Not bad? Oh come on. When are you gonna acknowledge a sensei? Naruto yells slash whines. Fine let's do another joint attack. 
you do fire and I do wind, Ganda said as Naruto nods. Naruto and Ganda do some hand signs before Naruto breathes in and yells, Fox fire release, Fox head technique. As the name implies, when Naruto breathes out, the fire comes out as a huge fox head that is a dark red, almost orange in color, with bright orange eyes and mouth. It launches forward making a roaring sound as Ganda finishes and launches another powerful wind wave, blade form but with a little twist. The blade actually spins and twists clockwise as it heads for the fox head. They collide and fuse together as the fox head becomes bigger, faster and brighter. The outside of it is bright red with orange while the mouth and eyes become yellow, almost while it roars as it heads to a tree, the mouth open as the back trails. It almost looks like the QB with one tail but no legs. It collides with the tree, incinerating it as it keeps going going through four more before exploding and taking out a group of trees. They all fall at different angles until one heads for the twins. Aw oh shit. Anko and Elisa gasp and yell at them to move but instead they see them grabbing something from their pouches. As soon as the tree gets close, they disappear in a flash. The girls wonder where they went until the tree breaks into a bunch of cut up wood. Then they see the brothers back to back, grinning at the girls. The girls sigh until Anko sees what they are holding. Two huge blades are in their hands one in Naruto's left hand and one in Gata's right. They are curved and shaped like scythes without the long handle, as long as they are tall. They are black with holes in the center from the tip to the hilt, each bigger than the last. But what Anka notices is the handle. Where the blade begins is at the side of what looks like a kunai. In fact it is a kunai. She can tell from the blunt end of it. Is that the power of their Keke Genkai? She thinks. The boys then jump up still holding the blades and land next to the girls. Well what you think? Naruto asks. Elisa smiles and kisses Ganta on the lips and Naruto on the cheek. That was cool boys. Anko just looks at them. But before she can ask about the blades, her concerned side comes out. She smacks their heads before looking at them. What the hell? You could have gotten killed. I mean yeah it was cool and powerful but be careful. Hey you said not bad so we amped it up. Ganta exclaims. Anko sighs. Yeah but still, anyways what is with the blades? The boys show her and her suspicions become true. So this is your Keke Genkai? They nod. So you can change the shape of anything metal? Almost. It depends on the metal and the density. Naruto says as Ganta nods. That and how much there is. Also how sharp or blunt. Anko nods in fascination. But only we can hold them. Anko looks at them confused. See even if we let them go they retain their shape when we put enough chakra. But they are very heavy. These blades weigh a good hundred pounds so unless you can lift that much and use with one hand, it's very hard to use. Naruto explains. Ah. Well very good. You guys have good chakra control and know a good amount. All you need I experience and you will go far. The boys nod and smile, finally being acknowledged. Thanks Anko-sensei. They say as the girls smile. Wait didn't you have another Keke Genkai? Anko asks. You snoop too much but yes. Ganda says. Hey I don't. Hokage-sama told me since you would be my Janan. Yeah yeah sensei. Naruto says making Anko puff up her cheeks. But you wanted to check it out? Now let's do it tomorrow. Right now we have to get started on missions. First our D rank. They boys cheer while Elisa groans loudly. Aw oh man. Not D rank again. She cries anime tears as the boys look at her. What's wrong I chan? He he you two will find out. Anko says as the boys wonder what is up. Forex. After the training in the Forest of Death, Team Anko head to the Hokage Tower where they can start their first mission, well for the boys anyway. Anko knocks on the door as she hears the Hokage say come in. She opens the door and they enter. The team stands in front of the Hokage as she tells him about the reason they are here. Sarutobi nods and hands her a scroll. Well here is the boys first mission. Have fun, he said with a smile. The boys nod while Elisa groans, again. Hey even you would grow knowing you have to do chores for the lazy villagers. The team walks out of the office and stand outside of the Hokage mansion. So what's our mission sensei? Naruto asks excitedly. Anko chuckles as she opens the scroll and reads. Well we have to go help the cooks at Ichirakus pack their stuff. The boys gasp. We forgot they are leaving today. Let's go, let's go. Naruto says as they run towards their destination. Anko and Elisa chuckle at their antics. To think those two can be serious at first then playful the next. Well they still have a lot to learn. Besides, we know how hard their childhood was, if we could call it that. Elisa says as they both nod at that. They head to the Ichirakus. When they get there, they see a lot of Naruto's and Genta's moving stuff around. Ayame and Tuchi smile seeing the comical scene as the clones bicker, grab stuff and put stuff in the wagon. 
Anko and Elisa walk up to them and greet themselves. So what's up with these two? Well Tosan said that if they pack everything up quickly, he will give them two free bowls, Ayame said making the girls sweat drop. Wow. That's not a bad idea though. They would do anything for ramen. Elisa thinks out loud as Anko thinks also. Hey what do you have in mind? Elisa blushes and looks at her sensei. WH what are you implying sensei? She stutters and looks away with a blush. Anko giggles as she watches the boys, having the same though in mind. After about 10 minutes, the clones disperse as Naruto and Ganta stand there breathing softly. Done, they said. The three girls and Tuchi giggle as he whips out two bowls of ramen, extra large, spicy chicken. He sets it down on the counter as the boys jump on the stools and dig in. Itadakimatsu, they said as they break their chopsticks, eating slowly knowing they won't have it for a while. The rest of the group gasps at that. What? We are just savoring. You two will be gone for a long while. Ganta exclaims as they nod in understanding. Hey okay but it's still weird to watch. Tuchi says. The girls nod to that. So how long you will be long? Anko asks. A month. Anko gasps. Oh. The boys without ramen that long, it might be disastrous. Well they can eat instant ramen ones. Ayame points out. Yeah but they take too long to heat up. Naruto says. Yeah but can you two use fire jutsus? Elisa points out. At hearing that the boys choke from that revelation before face palming. Gah we forgot, man we should have thought of that. Ganda says as everyone else snickers. Yeah well finish up, we have to leave soon. Ayame says. The boys nod and finish up in two seconds. One thought, fast. After handing the bowls to Tucci, they lead the wagon to the gate before waving goodbye to them. Don't be gone for too long now. Ganda says. Yeah come soon so you can tell us about your travels. Naruto says as they wave to Tucci and Ayame. Don't forget to message us for anything. The twins yell together as they watch them leave. Stay safe guys, they said softly before turning to Onko. Well I guess mission complete right? Naruto asks. Not until we tell Hokage-sama. They nod as they head back. Forex at the Hokage mansion, the group is in the office waiting for orders. Sarutobi looks through some scrolls and hands Onko another D-rank. Here you go Onko. Now you boys behave. The boys nod and mock salute. We can't guarantee that GG, they said in unison making everyone in their sweat drop. The Hokage laughs and smiles. Yeah but try. They nod as the group salutes and walk out. They make it outside and the group looks at Anko. So what do we got this time? Ganta asks. Well. Anko says as she opens the scroll and reads. We get to paint a fence. At hearing that, the boys shrink and lose all excitement. Paint a fence? Are the villagers that lazy? Ganta asks. Anko shrugs. May but we have to do it. The boys sulk. Fine. Anko snickers and nods then leads her team to where they are supposed to go. For the next two weeks, life. Would. Suck. Chapter 7. Two weeks later. Ever since their second D rank, the boys found life boring. Well from a mission standpoint. So in turn they pranked. A lot. No one was safe. Mainly Kakashi. Even though the whole chicken stunt was still out there they upped their prank against him just out of boredom. That and his Janan got tired of him appearing late. With no ramen fix, the boys tried other alternative foods. Barbecue was the only thing that came close to helping but no avail. Hell even other restaurants that never served them before tried to help since they didn't want to get caught in the crossfire. Good thing Ganda had Elisa but Naruto is another matter. At least a day they had a day off. The boys and Elisa are walking around wondering what to do. They already trained. Anko was out on a mission and wouldn't be back till later, the Ichirakus are out of town, and most of their friends are out on missions. Man I'm bored. Me too Naruto, me too. Ganda says as they sigh. Elisa can't help but agree until they see teammate by the spot they always hang at. However things were different. For once Kiba wasn't pestering Hinata. The group wondered why until they came up. Hey guys, Naruto said. Kiba looked up and waved as Akamaru barked. Shino said his greeting while Hinata greeted them with a blush when she saw Naruto. So you guys bored too with nothing to do? Ganta asked. The group nodded. Where's Gurunai-san? Elisa asked. She said she would meet us here but hasn't showed up yet, Kiba said. Hmm you don't think Kakashi gave her his lateness bug right? Naruto says earning chuckles from the group. Shino just smiled even though no one could see it. I heard you played another prank on Kakashi-san. Shino said. Oh yeah. We played a lot of them on different people. We got bored, Ganda said as D made sweat drops. Now you know what I got to deal with. Elisa said making Hinata chuckle. 
We well you guys wa want to hang out until Sensei comes? Hinata asked, cursing herself on the stuttering which only occurred when Naruto was around. Yeah sure we have nothing to do, Naruto said. Gata agreed as they started talking, Forex. About 20 minutes later, Kurinai walks up. Hey team. Oh hey Naruto, Ganta, Alisa. What are you doing here? Oh just hanging, Ganta said as he is literally hanging by a tree branch. Hey good joke. Where's Onko? She's on a mission and won't be back till later. We are just looking for time to kill. Alisa says as she sees Naruto and Hinata talking, well more like stuttering and blushing. I see. Well I guess we have to part. Oh wait I san Ganta jumps down then grabs her and Elisa and drags them to an alleyway. Sorry about that but I wanted to ask about something. Kurinai and Elisa look at each other before looking at him. Okay sure what's up? Well it deals with our blushing couple. Kurinai nods snickering Abbott. I was wondering when you next day off is. Kurinai thinks. Like in four days. Hmm well if we don't have that big of a mission, I was thinking it's time to put those two together. We all know Hinata likes Naruto and he likes her. Kurinai gasps. He likes her? This time Elisa speaks up. Yep. For a long time now. Just don't know why they haven't tried anything yet. It's getting annoying now. Kurinai smiles. Well that's true. But what can we do? All we need is to put them together. And separate Kiba from her although it seems he stopped trying didn't he? Ganta asks. Kurinai nods at that. Let's just say she told him off. Big time. She only sees him as a little brother and comrade. Much like I see Naruto that way, Elisa said. So what's the plan? Kurinai asks, a bit of excitement in her voice. Well I think Hyashi-san probably knows about her crush so we might need his help. Probably some others. Ganda says as the girls agree. He tells them the rest of his plan and they nod at that. Aw oh, that sounds like our first date gone kun Elisa says. Hey it worked for us and look at us now. It will work for him. If not I'll hurt him. He said reassuringly. The girl's sweat dropped but not at all the same. Okay so you tell the other people that we need the plan and me and Elisa will get some of the items. Cool? The girls nodded at that. Okay so we do this four days from now, around six-ish. Before the sun sets, on the Hokage Monument which is the best spot to watch the sunset. They nod and walk back to the group. Hey what were you guys talking about? Naruto asks. Oh a little of this, a little of that. Gana says making Naruto suspicious. Uh-huh, you better not plan a prank without me. Oh trust me this is no prank man. Besides we called truce a while back on the prank war between us. I don't want to reignite that. Not after what happened, he said mumbling the last part. Naruto nods at that remembering what happened. Okay so then I guess you guys will be going right? Naruto asks Kurinai. She nods. Yeah but we'll catch you later okay. She says as teammate walks away. Team Anko head a different direction and sigh. So what now? When is Anko Sensei getting back? Ganta asks. Naruto shrugs. Well, I don't know, boys, but I'm bored too. Elisa says as they sigh. That is until they sense three different signatures behind them. They turn around and see a rock, shaped like a box, with eye holes on the front. The three Janan look at each other, then the box. Akono Hamaru, what are you doing? Naruto asks in a groan. Aw oh, man, boss. You saw through it. The box says as it puffs away in smoke. A lot of smoke. Three kids cough from within the smoke. Uck too much smoke Konohamaru. The smoke clears revealing three kids, Konohamaru, Udon, and Moegi. Wow boss how did you know it was us? Because square rocks don't exist and don't have eye holes. Naruto says, annoyed. He he well you're good boss for seeing that. Kimonko sweat drops. Ah uh, well what are you guys doing here anyway? Ganta asks. Oh well we are wondering if you guys want to play ninja. Moegi says. The team look at each other. Um aren't you supposed to be with Abisu? You mean the closet pervert? Ah uh, yeah him. We don't know where he is. Konohamaru says. Ah uh, don't you mean we ran away from him? Udon says, snorting a snot bubble that came out of his nose and adjusted his glasses. The older kids shuddered at that. Why run? Elisa asks. Well he won't train us seriously. And he doesn't even play ninja right with us. Moegi says. Can you please play with us and maybe prank Abisu sensei? She asks using the puppy-eyed jutsu on them. Naruto looks a bit freaked out while Ganta and Elisa chuckle. Of course but you don't have to use the jutsu on us. We'll be happy to help. That and we are bored. Moegi and the boys cheered as the preteen smiled. So where was he last? Uh I think we left him behind near the hot springs. Konohamaru says. Really? All three preteens say together slowly, freaking team Konohamaru out. 
Hmm I wonder why you lost him there. Naruto thinks out loud while the kids look at each other. Well come on let's go find him and prank him, hardcore. Both groups nod and go to find the closet perv, Forex. In the hot springs, a group of four girls walk outside the changing area and head to the springs. They each had a towel covering their bodies. One had blonde pigtails, one had red pigtails, one had white hair and the last had orange hair tied up in pigtails that stuck up. They are Naruko, Ginsa, Alisa, and Moegi. Moegi was blushing up a storm knowing who Naruko and Ginsa really are but knew that these two aren't perverts. In fact they hated perverts, which is why they are here doing this prank. Their towels however are trying to bust out since their assets are a bit big on the chest and butt areas. All four sit on the edge of the spring with their legs in the water. They giggle as Naruko and Ginsa look around, trying to sense where Ebisu is. Ginsa notices first and sweat drops. You have to be kidding me. She says in a low, cute voice. The other girls look at her in confusion. Don't look but in the far wall there is a tarp with shoes sticking out the bottom. She said making the other three sweat drop looking in that direction. If you think that is bad, check the tree. Naruko says in the same voice as they look at the tree and see some white hair on a branch, just enough where you could see the tip. The girls sweat drop even more. So two perverts in one spot. Time to teach them a lesson. Elisa says as the others agree. Ginsa heads to where Ebisu is while Naruko heads to where Jiraiya is. Ginsa goes near the wall and goes to the waterfall that's next to it that feeds to the springs. She dunks her head in and then shakes it around giving Ebisu a view that will never go away for a long time, until later when the prank is revealed. Ginsa's breasts bounce around as her ass shakes. That feels good. Meanwhile Naruko heads under the tree and starts doing some stretches. Jiraiya is having a blast. Oh man. Twins in one spot. One getting wet and the other doing stretches. He giggles perversely as he talks in a quiet voice. Naruko sighs as she heard him. He doesn't learn. Oh well time to set this off. She bends down and shows him her ass making him go wide-eyed as he moves, making the tree shake. Pretending to be dumb, she looks up and sees some hair. Ee a pervert. She screams making Jiraiya fall out. At the same time Ebisu gets caught off guard and falls forward making Ginsa scream too. Another one here. She screams. Elisa and Moegi stifle their laugh seeing the act. Man these two are good. Oh yeah. Gonta Kun and Naruto are experts in the art of pranking. Now remember the plan. We draw them to the doors by blocking out any other exit so they can go to the alleyway. Elisa says making Moegi nod. They turn back and see the girls beat up the perverts as Elisa and Moegi get up blocking any other way out except the main exit. Perverts. The twins yell out as the two peepers run off together, going through the exit as they run past more women, making them scream as well. Our four girls snicker and run after them. Don't let them get away. Ginsa screams out as they run after them. Forex in the alley. Konohamaru and Udon wait in place as they are ready to spring the trap. They see their teacher, a man with white hair and weird clothes and the girls. They run straight for the alleyway. As soon as the men enter and go halfway, they boys here now. They pull the wires and activate two traps that grab the men's legs and pull them up making them dangle upside down. The group of kids and preteens get together in front of the men, with smirks on their faces. In a puff of smoke, the twin girls become Naruto and Gata while Elisa and Moegi are fully dressed. Jiraiya and Ebisu gasp. So what shall we do with these two now? Konohamaru asks as the twin smiles become sadistic grins that would make Anko proud. Oh I have an idea. Ganda says as the men shake in fear. Forex, the group of Jinan and three kids can be seen walking down the street, away from the hot springs. They all had smiles on their faces, making people seeing them wonder why until girly screams and shrills could be heard. They are Jiraiya and Ebisu getting penated by the girls and women in the hot springs in anger after getting strung up near the hot spring with signs saying we are perverts and have been watching you. Please punish us. Below that on a different sign it says courtesy of Naruto, Ganta, Alisa, Konohamaru, Udon, and Moegi. With them holding up victory signs in chibi form. The group snickers hearing their screams as they walk away. Think they will stop now? Moegi asks. Sadly the preteens shake their heads. For now yes but afterwards they will do it again. Well I know Godfather will, Ebisu I'm not sure. Naruto says as the group shrugs and walk forward until Anko appears in front of them via Shushin, scaring the kids. Hey guys. Hey Anko sensei. You shouldn't that though. You scared the kids. Ganda says as Anko looks at them sheepishly. Sorry. Now. Another scream could be heard. What was that? She asks as the group smiles. Oh two perverts being punished. Naruto says getting Anko to snicker. Nice. 
Well I would join but we have to go to the Hokage mansion so I can turn in my report and you two can start your first C rank mission. Anko says as the boys cheer. Alright. They say as the Konohamaru squad gets sad. The boys see this and kneel down. Sorry guys but we can play ninja another time and maybe prank your sensei again. Deal? Naruto says as the kids nod. Okay but don't be gone for too long. Let's go guys. Konohamaru says as they run off, waving goodbye to their friends. Anko smiles as she looks at her team. Okay let's go. She says as they shush in out, Forex. At the Hokage mansion, the team arrives as they go up the stairs and Anko knocks on the door. The Hokage says come in with a bit of a snicker in his voice. They open the door and walk in and see Sarutobi and Team 9 inside snickering, well except Neji who had a small smile on his face. The group looks at the modly before Anko speaks up uh, before I give my report, what is so funny? Sarutobi and group smiles before they laugh again. Sorry but we just saw what your group and my grandson's group done and I have to say brilliant. He says as they all wipe an imaginary tear. Team Anko snicker at that while Anko shakes her head with a smile. I heard. After everyone calms down. Anko gives her report. Sarutobi nods as she hands him a scroll. Good. Now I'm guessing you're here for a mission. She nods. Yep. It's time for the twins to venture out of the village. So I was thinking a C rank. They boys jump with joy as Elisa shakes her head. I see well you were just in time. Team 9 is also here for another C rank. It is an escort mission for the D Daimyo's daughter who is here visiting and needs to head back. The group nods as Ghana speaks up. How long is it from here to the land of tea and back? Well about a day and a half via carriage and half a day via tree running. Ganta nods as everyone there except Elisa wonder why he asked that. Sarutobi shrugs. Okay well you guys meet at the gate in an hour. Pack anything necessary. Dismissed. Everyone nodded and left the office. Sarutobi goes back to his crystal ball and sees Ebisu and Jiraiya still getting their punishment until the girls walk away, satisfied smiles on their faces. The two men are twisting around all bruised up and bloodied. Next time, we do this when the twins aren't here. Jiraiya says as Ebisu nod. Sarutobi laughs at that as he sees them puff out after being released from the rope that was holding them up. Forex. About an hour later, Team Anko appear at the gate, waiting for Team 9 and their client. Anko looks at the boys. So you have everything packed? She asked as the boys tap on their scrolls that are on their back. Yep. I even have I chans stuff too. Gana says making Anko nod. A couple minutes later, Team 9 appears. The boys wave. Hey Tenten A. They say as Tenten waves back. Hey boys. Ready to for your first C rank? They nod eagerly. Tenten waves to the girls as they wave back while Lee comes up. Hey guys. Ready to show the world your flames of youth? He screams out with fire in his eyes making everyone sweat drop. Ah yeah Lee San. Ganda says nervously before leaning to Tenten. Nechan he needs a girlfriend to keep him lying. He whispers as Tenten sighs then snickers. But who will that be? She asks whispering back making Gana snicker. True. He needs someone to beat some sense into him. They keep whispering as Naruto joins in. Before long, the client whom they will escort appears accompanied by four paladins. The girl walks up to the teams. Hello I'm Kirito. Hope you get me home safe Shinobi-san. She says in politeness. The teams bow and say their names, well except our two dunderheads who go into a pose as they say I'm Naruto Uzumaki. And I'm Ganta Uzumaki. And we are the Uzumaki twins, the twin pranksters of Konoha. They say with a victory sign. Anko, Elisa and Tenten face palm as Neji sighs in irritation. Lee and Guy have, anime tears. So energetic. So full of life. Yes their flame of youth will. Shine. Brightly forever. Everyone sweat drops at that. Yes they will Guy sensei. We will also be as bright if not brighter. Lee exclaims as they go for a hug. Lee. Guy sensei, before they reach however. If you two finish that hug, we will do a worse punishment that makes our pranks look like child's play. Ganta exclaims as they break it off. The group lets go off a breath they were holding. Kirito smiles nervously as she scratches her cheek wondering if this might happen often. Anko sees her nervousness. Sorry about that. Those four can get Abbott, odd but don't worry you will be safe. She says reassuring Kirito. Okay. She says before walking to her carriage and climbing inside. The paladins pick it up as the group look at each other. Ganda and Naruto change their faces from happy to serious. Okay it would be best if me, Naruto and Neji take up the front since he has the Byakugan and we are censors. Elisa and Lee can take the sides and Tenten at the back. Anko sensei and Gai san can be at the back as lookouts for random ambushes. I know it's a C rank but once outside the village, 
the rules can change. We have to expect the unexpected. Gonda says in all seriousness, everyone has wide eyes wondering where the Gonda that was just there went. Even Neji was baffled. Alisa was thinking perverted thoughts as she bit her finger in a sexual way. Gonda kun That was so hot. Anko shakes from her stupor and nods at that plan. Good plan. Okay get in formations everyone. Everyone breaks from their stupor and nod getting into formation. Naruto and Gonta don't change faces. Move out. Anko says as they head out at a jogging pace. Forex. They run in formation on the path making great time until. Stop. Naruto yells as everyone comes to a stop. What is it? Guy asks. One of my clones got taken out. Naruto says as Gonta shakes a bit. Now one of mine. Seems like we have enemies on both sides. He says as Neji activates his Byakugan. He looks around and gasps. Damn we have 20 bandits on one side of the forest and 20 on the other. However two have high chakra signatures, he said. Everyone defensive formation around the carriage. Protect the client. Ganta exclaims as they jump to position. Everyone except the twins get in a defensive stance. The twins look around, until they look up. Shit above. They yell as they take out their swords and block the incoming attack. They push the attackers away as they fall back onto the ground, a good couple feet away. Well we knew that there would be protection but just kids? A female voice could be heard as the group of bandits appears from the forest. The kids tense until the woman and a burly man walk out. Anko and Guy gasp as the woman claps. Not bad though. She says as Naruto narrows his eyes and speaks up. Saki, an A-rank missing nin from Konoha. Defected for reasons unknown. Expert in Genjutsu. Bryce Khan, an A-rank missing nin from Kumo. Defected for reasons unknown. Expert in Raten and Fuut and Jutsus. Gana finishes. Everyone looks at them in shock. Well I didn't know we were that known. And by brats nonetheless. The woman named Saki said. Well these two are always full of surprises. Anko says. So you two here for the daimyo's daughter? Saki nods. Well you aren't getting to her. She says but before she and Guy can do anything, the twins walk forward. What are you two doing? Relax Sanko sensei Gana says. We will just deal with the stragglers. Naruto finishes as they stand between both groups. Well what are you waiting for, a uh, please? Get them. Saki yells as the bandits run to them. Meanwhile the boys roll up the sleeves and cut the back of their forearms on both their arms. Their blood comes out but instead of it leaking out, it floats until it becomes two blades, the same shape as their kunai when they extend them. Saki gasps as Bryce looks on in awe. The bandits stop and back up in fear. Naruto and Gonda smirk as they get an Akenjutsu Taijutsu combo stance, their blades pointing back almost touching behind them. Ah what happened? Don't tell me you guys got scared. Gonda says in a mocking tone. Saki snaps out of it and yells. Attack damn it. It's just two of them. The bandits shake from their stupor and charge again. Idiots. The twins say as they wait till they get close until they disappear. Both the groups see the boys dance between the bandits, cutting them up as each one falls one by one until none are left standing except the boys who are looking at the Nukunens. Underestimation will get you killed out here. Remember that. Naruto says as the twins shush and out and get replaced with Guy and Aiko. Guy roundhouses Bryce as he, not expecting that, gets launched to the forest while Anko Guk punches Saki and sends her back to the ground, also not expecting that their minds still on what just happened. They break from their stupor as Guy and Bryce begin their fight while Saki and Anka look at each other, a scowl on their faces. Forex. Meanwhile back with the teens and the client, the boys look at them and shout. Break out of your stupor and get in formation. Even if they are fighting, keep an eye out. Don't get caught off guard by any surprises. The Genins break from their stupor as all six get in formation. But Team 9, the Paladins and even Kirito have one thing in mind. What was that? Forex with Anko and Saki, they look at each other as they move around in circles, sizing each other up and trying to read each other's minds. Why? Saki looks at her with narrowed eyes as Anko asks again. Why did you run Saki? They stop as Saki giggles. You really want to know? She asks as Anko keeps looking at her, a scowl still on her face. Well one of the main reason was that Kakashi-san didn't accept me. Anko face faults at that. She recovers and points at her with an annoyed look. That's the reason? Are you fucking kidding me? She yells. The Janan heard and faulted at that, thinking of the same questions. Saki shrugs. There is another but I won't tell you. She gets in an attack stance. Now fight me Anko-chan. I'm not the same as before. She says smugly and sweetly. Anko scowls as she gets into her stance. Hey well I'm also not the same as before. But let's see how you do. 
They both attack each other, Saki seeing her mistake. Sure she improved from the last time she saw Anko, but what she doesn't know is thanks to the boys and Elisa, Anko improved her speed, stamina and power. Overall Saki is outmatched. Anko got a lot of hits in as Saki started to become winded from them. She looks at the group of Jinan and smirks as she does some hand signs then puts everyone in again Jutsu. Anko stops but resumes fighting Saki but actually what she is fighting is an illusion. Saki smirks in triumph as she heads to the carriage. She sees the group just stand there watching the fight as she keeps walking. She makes it up to the carriage coming near Ganta until she gasps as she is grabbed from behind. She turns her head and sees a blood blade near her neck as she gasps. Not bad. But you didn't count on four people that can see through Genjutsu. Naruto says as she looks around and sees another blood blade, a katana and a kunai on her body. Damn. She says before getting knocked out. Anko walks up, after getting rid of the Genjutsu on her and smiles at her team, seeing Saki getting tied up. Good job team. Where is Guy at? Before anyone could answer or shrug. Dynamic entry. Was hurt as Guy burst through the forest and landed in front of the group with Bryce on his shoulder. Everyone sweat dropped while Lee had stars in his eyes. I'm guessing he wasn't that hard to beat huh? Anko asks as Guy shakes his head. Nope he wasn't. Actually I don't think he even qualifies as an A rank. More like a low B. That's because you're on a league of your own guy san. Naruto says as the other genins nod at that. Yeah well let's go. Uh actually can we stop for a break Anko sensei? We have been running for at least 3 hours and the paladins look habit winded. Ganta pointed out. Anko looked at them and nodded. Fine. We get a 30 minute break. They all nod as they walk habit forward before finding a small clearing. Forex. During that time, everyone gets to eating while they talk. Ganta and Naruto already made plenty of clones to send back Saki and Bryce to Konoha so they wouldn't have to carry them the rest of the way. The brothers and Elisa were talking until Neji comes up to them. Guys I have a question and I know it's on everyone's minds. The twins and Elisa look at them. Let me guess, the blood? Naruto asks as Neji nods. Ganta sighs. Well might as well tell them. Basically it's our Uzumaki bloodline. Everyone there minus Elisa. Anko, and Guy gasps at that. But there are no records of Uzumaki even having one. Tenten says. That's because it's a secret. Because of our bloodline, we can actually take out poisons from our system before they take effect. Naruto says. Not just that but with enough chakra and training and using it, we can even grow limbs and organs back, except the head and heart for obvious reasons. Although Kurama helps out faster with those two things but they don't need to know that. Ganda says, the last part keeping it to himself. The group just sat there dumbstruck as they heard everything. So basically it's almost like a miracle KK Genkai? Lee asks. The twins nod. Pretty much. Now you see why it's been kept a secret but it is hard to hide. I mean when people see you moving your blood like that, word tends to go around. Naruto says as they nod at that. Besides it's not like others can use it. It can only be passed down through birth. Not blood transfusion or by some crazy scientist. When the blood comes out of our body and gets disconnected like say a syringe, the blood becomes useless but only in the Kakegen Kai part. Ganta mentions, well I hope that answers everyone's questions. Actually what other ways can be used? Tenten asks. Well other than blades, we can shoot it out like a projectile. Naruto says as he cuts Abbott in his hand then forms a ball using the blood. He then points his hand to a tree across the road and shots it. The ball of blood moves at a great force as it impacts said tree and goes through it hitting two more before they fall in the forest. Everyone has wide eyes seeing that and even though Anko and Elisa have seen it, it's still amazing. There is also using it as a whip. Ganda says as he gets up and cuts his hands, the blood comes out but at a faster rate until they are longer than his body in the shape of tentacle-like appendages. He whips one on the road as the road gets cut up then does it again with the other until he moves the whips around in his body almost like he is dancing until he whips them across the road and cuts up a tree clean through and makes it fall. He turns to the group with a smile as they sit there in awe. Man that is insane. Tenten says. And the last is armor. Ganda says as Naruto stands next to him. Everyone looks at him questioningly until the cuts on their hands start to crystallize then wrap around their arm then their whole body. This armor is crazy strong but not indestructible. But it has better mobility than most types. Naruto says. Not just that but we can use it offensively. Ganda says as the blood armor recedes but stops at their hands until it looks like their hands grow and take shape. They become huge claws, four times the size of their hands. They nod each other and run for a huge boulder nearby and pounce, obliterating it. They walk back to the group with a smile. And that's it for the show kids. But hold your questions for later. We need to start heading out again. Everyone nods, 
breaking out of their stupor and pack their stuff. After about five minutes, they head out in formation around the carriage. Everyone talking about random things, mainly about the little show they just saw. Although Neji was quiet. So were the boys. They were still on the lookout for any more bandits and ambushes. Lucky the rest of the way there was a cakewalk. They made it before midday the next day, after finding a spot to sleep. The group saluted the daimyo while Kirito walked out of the carriage and greeted her father. She told them of how the trip was, the bandits they encountered and how the ninjas protected them. She left out the part of the boy's bloodline however. After the group made sure everything was okay, they left after saying goodbye to everyone. They made it back home in less than a day after Lee wanted a running challenge. It took a while but the boys broke down and accepted. Ganta decided to up the ante and put Elise on his back while Naruto put Anko on his back much to the girls' arguments but didn't really mind it. Lee got ten ten, after a good argument and they all ran off leaving a huge dust trail. Guy ran off after them as Neji just stood there. He sighed knowing how Lee gets and ran after them. First was Ganta, third was Naruto and fifth was Lee. He cried knowing he lost but decided that these two would be his rivals. Everyone sweat dropped at that but shrugged it off knowing it's not bad to have a rival. Guy and Lee cried anime tears from all this and almost hugged until they were met by two feet to their faces. The twins dragged them as the group headed to the Hokage mansion. Forex. And after we got her home we came here. After the boys decided to have a race, Anko said, finish the report to the Hokage. Sarutobi smoked his pipe as he took everything in. Yes well we have both Saki and Bryce in the TNI department so you can talk with them. Anko nods to that. Well congrats boys for your first C rank and the rest for a mission well done. Now have the rest of the day and the next three off. Dismissed, he said knowing about Gana's plan since Kur and I came yesterday and told him about it. The group nods as they take their leave. They make it outside as they look at each other. Well what now? Naruto asks. Naruto, Gana spar with me. I want to see how strong I am. Lee says to them. The boys smile sheepishly as Naruto nods but Ganda shakes his head. Sorry Lee but me and Elisa have to prepare for a date. Lee nods in understanding as he grabs Naruto and runs off. Naruto gets dragged away without putting in his opinion as the group snickers at that. So a date huh? Anko asks. Actually not really. See I have a plan and it's to get Naruto and he nodded together. He says as they nod at that, and I will need help. Kurinai knows but probably might be on a mission. She said her team will be free in two days so that gives us enough time. I'm not sure who she told but it would be best to ask around. Me and Elisa will go to the Hyuga compound and ask Hyashisama about it. Meanwhile you guys can help around. Basically we need food, decorations, stuff that screams first date. Also stuff they like. It will be on the Hokage monument around 6 right before the sun sets. Please help. We have to get these two together cause I'm tired of them just blushing and not really doing anything. It's starting to get annoying. Oh and Tenten go to Ino. I'm not sure if she knows and spread the word, everyone agreed to that. After telling them the plan, Anko went one way while Guy went another, probably to look for Kakashi since he had no idea what to do. Tenten and, after some persuasion, mainly dragging, Neji went in another direction to find Ino. Ganda and Elisa head to the compound. When they arrive, they tell the guards that they want an audience with Hiroshisama. After about 10 minutes, the doors open as the guard lets them know to come in. They walk through the compound, greeting everyone they see until they hear. Ganta and Isan. Elise and Achan. Ganta sees Hanabi running at them as they smile. He bends down with open arms as Hanabi tackles him in a hug. He falls back on the floor in a laughing fit. He he hey Hanabi. Man you have gotten stronger. Ganta says as the girl snicker. Of course Nisan. She looks around. Where's Nartoni? Oh he's with Lisan. She nods at that. His eyebrows are scary. The small group laughs at that as Gana gets up holding Hanabi. So why you two here? Well you know how Hinata and Naruto like each other? Elisa says. She nods at that. Well we are here to ask if your Tosan can help. I know everyone here can agree those two need to get together. Finally. Hanabi says excitedly making everyone that heard laugh. They follow the guard to where Hiyashi is as they stop as his office. Gana sets down Hanabi but she holds his hand. The guard knocks on the door then opens it telling Hyashi that Ganta and Elisa are here. Hyashi tells them to come in as they walk in. The guard leaves with a bow as he closes the door. The three kids bow to Hyashi as he bows back. They all sit as Hyashi speaks. So why have you two requested an audience with me? He asks in a professional tone. Ganta sits up and speaks. Hyashi-sama, me and Elisa here have come to ask for your help. He nods at that. 
We aren't sure if Kur and I san told you yet but we have a plan for getting your daughter and my dense brother together. Hiyashi nods and lets out a sigh as he drops his composure a bit. Uck finally, it's about time those two got together. The kids look at him dumbstruck. You mean you're okay with it? Alisa speaks up, Hiyashi nods at that. I'm perfectly fine with it. Mainly because I knew who your father was Ganta. He gasps at that. Yes me, along with the clan heads knew of him since we were all like best friends. Think of us as the old rookies of the past. The kids nod at that. So then let me guess, you two either made a bet or a will of sorts? Ganta asks. Hiyashi chuckles at it, hmm well more like a promise. Our children would marry each other when the time comes. The kids gasp at that. Really? You two came up with that? Hiyashi half nods. Okay it was our wives actually but we agreed with it. So I will marry Gantani in the future? Hanabi asks. Hiyashi nods. Hanabi, forgetting where she is at, squeals and glomps Ganta. Yay. Everyone snickers at that as Ganta lies on the floor. Hee hee I'm fine with that but Hanabi you got to watch your tackles. Hanabi blushes and sits up regaining her composure. Ganta does too with a smile. But let's put that off later. Right now we need help with my plan. I already told our sensei and team 9 except Lee who ran off but it was fine since he took Naruto with him. I'll tell him to keep Naruto busy until two days from now when the date will be since that is when team 8 will return. I'm not sure who else knows but for now we need people that can help us with food, decorations, the works. I'm sure Hinata has a dress for occasions like this right? Ganta asks as Hiyashi nods. Yes she does and I'll go ask around. This sounds like fun, he said with a rare smile. Okay the operation get the blushing couple together will begin soon. They nod at that as they talk into the night about things they need and how to go through it. Forex. It became night time as Ganta and Elisa walk out and head to the entrance. After waving goodbye, and a kiss from Hanabi on the cheeks, they walk out of the compound and head home. The next two days will be busy in the village. Chapter 8 A day and a half later, the past day was busy in the village as word spread about the plan. However thanks to Hinata being on a mission and Naruto sparring with Lee, after telling Lee the plan, the plan stayed a secret. The clan heads also got into it as they decided to decorate the top of the monument a couple hours before the date would start. The Akimikis decided to prepare the dinner while the bakery that Hinata goes to also made some cinnamon rolls that Hinata loves. Ganda also had some ramen that he got from the Ijirakus before they left sealed up. Some, if not most, of the civilians didn't help but couldn't really do anything about it since this was in a way a clan matter. Not even the civilian council, aside from Mebuki couldn't do anything especially since the Hokage threatened them. The Hokage wanted this to happen since he felt like he owed the boys. All was set up and all that was needed was for the blushing couple to get their invitations. Forex. It was 5.30 as Naruto was at home while Ganta was with Elisa. He sighed as he was reading when a knock was heard. He got up and walked to the door. Not sensing anyone, he opened it slowly until he could stick his head out until he looked down and saw a package with a note on top. He looked around again as he picked it up then walked back inside. Sitting on the couch, he opened the note and read it. Come to the Hokage Monument at the top at 6. Wear the suit and the package. Signed your secret admirer. It read. He was confused until the scent of lavender and cinnamon hit his nose. He smelled the card and got the scent again. Wait, only Hinata smells like this. Could she be it? He thought to himself although his brother and Kurama heard him. He opened the package and pulled out an orange tuxedo that wasn't too orange complemented by black and blue accents. He put it on after changing clothes and found it to be a perfect fit. He fixes himself up and heads out the apartment, not noticing the wandering eyes on him. Forex. At the same time in the Hyuga manner, Hinata was on her bed thinking of her day. Well actually she was thinking of her Naruto with the apparent blush on her face. My Naruto. I wish she really was mine. As if on cue, there is a knock on the door. She gets up and walks to it but before she opens it a note is slipped through from the bottom. Curiously but with a bit of caution, she bends down and picks it up. Slowly she opens it and sees a small note. Come to the Hokage Monument at the top at 6. Wear your favorite dress. Signed your secret admirer. She gasped at that and then got hit by the scent of ramen. Ramen? But only Naruto she gasps again as she goes into her walk-in closet and changes her clothes. She comes out wearing a lavender dress with a dark purple flower arrangement around it curving up. She walks to the desk in her room with a mirror and applies a small amount of makeup around her eyes that brings out the lavender color on them. Okay I'm ready Naruto-kun. She blushes at that as she gets up and lets her hair stay the same except she puts on a hairpin on her right side, exposing her ear. She walks out of the manor and heads to the monument, not realizing that it was almost empty. 
there were wondering eyes following her also, Forex, since the Hyuga compound is closer, Hinata makes it first. She gasps at what she sees on top. A whole bunch of her favorite flowers, some candles even though the sun was still out but setting, and a picnic basket in the center of a lavender blanket that is surrounded by the flowers. The flowers are arranged making a path to where she is. Wow it's so beautiful. She says in thought, before long, Naruto also makes it and has the same reaction but then sees Hinata. Hi Hinata. He says in a low voice making her turn to him. They both blush seeing each other. So so you're my secret ad admirer? She stutters. He gasps at that blushing but nods. Why yes but how did you know? She looks at him blushing still. I I got your end note. He looks at her oddly. Ah uh, well I got one saying that I got a secret admirer, are you her? He asks as she gasps but nods. Why yes but I need never sent you a end note. Before they could try to figure everything out though, soft music starts playing out of nowhere as more candles light up creating a small ambience in the forest. They gasp at that as they see Ganta and some people come out playing instruments. They keep playing as Ganta winks at both. Well I hope you two like your date. Naruto and Hinata gasp again as they blush. Naruto gets closer to Hinata as she does the same. He looks at her as she does him and both hold hands. Well shall we get this date started then? He asked softly. Yes. She replied back. They walk down the flower path as he gently sits her down on the blanket then sits next to her. They smile as Ganta and the guys start playing again. Naruto smiles at Hinata as they hold hands. He blushes nervously. Well I'm sorry if I'm gonna be awkward but this is my first date. Me mine too, she said softly. They both sit there as Ganta sighs. Man they need help. Naruto you can start by opening the picnic basket and maybe talk about each other. Ganta said in thought as Naruto chuckles. He nods as he opens the basket and they both get hit with the smell of wonderful food. He reaches inside and pulls out a bowl of ramen, some barbecue, a dish of zenzai, and some cinnamon rolls with some non-alcoholic bubbly. They gasp and smiled at the food as they laid it out. As the music played, Naruto and Hinata ate and talked together, about their life, their likes and dislikes, what they want in the future, and what they see in each other. Ganta had a smile on his face as the various people watching were either crying, happy, or at awe. Some thinking about the Tujinan while others were thinking about their date and the spot they were in. Well mainly the men now knowing a good spot to take their wives slash girlfriends. Each one thanking Ganta mentally for this. Guy and Lee are there too but were separated for obvious reasons. After a while, the sun hit a spot on the horizon signifying that it was setting as the rays of the sun hit the village making it shine like if it was covered in gold, one of the main reason the twins actually like this spot. Wow. It's so beautiful, Hinata whispered. Not as beautiful as you Hinata Haim. Naruto says as he kisses her lips. She moans gently and kisses him back as they embrace themselves. The audience behind them awe as the women cry anime style wondering why their men, the ones that had won didn't take them on dates like this. Ganta snickered as he kept playing while the new couple looked at the forest then at Ganta. Thanks bro but how many people are here? Ganta looks back at the forest then at them. Oh a bit of the village here, a bit of the village there, he said making Naruto fall tabbit and Hinata giggle. Come on Ganasan, you can tell us. Well okay I guess since the date went and ended well. Mainly the clan heads, GG, our godfather, some other people that helped out, and our friends. He says as they look at him in disbelief. That many? Wait is this what you meant by the plan? Naruto asks suspiciously. Ganda shrugs. Yep. You caught me. Well everyone operation get the blushing couple together is a success. He yells as the people walk out cheering. The new couple blushes at hearing that before Naruto scratches his head. What do you mean by that? Ganda face bombs. Man are you dense. Basically everyone here knew about you too. It was too obvious. We just decided that it got annoying and just put you two together. He states making Hinata and Naruto look down sheepishly. Well it worked. Let's hope Hinata here can break you of your denseness. Ganda snickers at that. Yep. Although now everyone knows why I picked this spot and wouldn't be surprised if more couples come here for dates. Ganda says, emphasizing the last part. Some of the men chuckle and held their wives or girlfriends. Ganda goes and lies on the ground. Well I don't know about you but I think I'll stay abid and stargaze. He said as everyone looks up as they gasp seeing the clear night sky. Most people stayed, mainly couples, as others walked away saying good night. Elisa cuddled with Ganta as Hinata and Naruto cuddled together watching the stars. Hyashi and Sarutobi walked away with a smile on their faces, both thinking of their wives, missing them dearly. That night was a good one for the twins and everyone there as they stayed in silence enjoying the peace, watching the stars. 
Forex, next morning, the sun broke through the horizon as its light started to cover the village. Some of the villagers are starting to wake up while others are opening up shops. We find the twins in their apartment, waking up after the good night's sleep. They both have smiles on their faces, Naruto the biggest after what happened last night. They prepare for the day as they go through their routine to get ready like always. They finish up and head out wearing their custom jumpsuits. They walk along the village, seeing some of the villagers. However something was different. They would still get some glares but now a lot of the villages looked at them with smiles on their faces. Some waved while others just nodded and slightly bowed. They returned the gesture as they smile sheepishly. What do you think caused this? Naruto asks. Probably from the date last night. They are probably thinking that we can't be demons after the affection you gave to Hinata and the spot we always hang out at seeing how the village looks at different times of the day. Ganda says. They both sigh at that. Well it's better than before right you two? Just accept it just in case it doesn't last. Kurama says as they boys nod at that. That's true. And let's hope it does. Naruto says as they keep walking. Soon afterwards, they are joined by Elisa and Hinata. The boys hug and kiss their girlfriends. Hey morning girls. Ready for the day? Ganta asks as they nod. Yep. Last night was great. When are you gonna take me out again Ganta-kun? Elise asks cutely. Well soon when we are free. Maybe we can double date if we can. Hinata says. Yeah not a bad idea. Naruto says. Well okay then double date when we are free. Ganta says as they nod. Hey uh did Anko san tell us where to meet up? Naruto brings up. Ganta and Elisa look at them then each other. Nope. Crap we should have asked. Let's go to a regular spot and wait for her there. Ganda says with a sigh. Naruto looks at Hinata. How about you Haim? I have to meet my team up for training. Sorry. Catch you later guys. She kisses Naruto heatedly earning them catcalls. Catch you later, Naruto Koi. She says the last part seductively as Naruto nods dumbly. Ganda and Elisa snicker at that as they see Hinata walk away. Well now since Naruto finally got Hinata. I don't think we will see the shy girl anymore. Ganda says. We might see that more often. I think I got a rival now. Elisa says making Ganda sweat drop. In what, the kissing and walking away seductively department? He asks. Elisa shrugs as Naruto breaks from his stupor. Huh? What are you two saying? This time they openly laugh. Wow Naruto I think she broke you. Ganda says laughing. Naruto looks at him with puffed cheeks. Hey not funny. Now come on let's go. He said as they walk to their meeting spot. Forex, they arrive at the entrance to the forest of death and look around. Hages Onko Sensei is not here. Naruto says. Of course I am. I was waiting for you three. Onko says as she jumps out of the nearby tree. The kids flinch at that as they see her. Gee Onko Sensei, you could have given us a time. Ganda says as Onko shrugs. Yeah well I forgot cuz of last night. That date idea was good Ganta. At least Naruto finally got Hinata even if he needed a lot of help. She snickers at that as Naruto pouts. I was just biding my time. He says. Sure. All three say looking at him. Yeah yeah anyway what's the schedule for today? Naruto asks. Anko looks at him and thinks. Well we can do D-rank missions. The three Janan groan at that. More? Why do you torture us Anko sensei Ganta asks. And don't say cause you enjoy it since we know you do. He adds on. Anko scratches her cheek sheepishly. Well it's true. But come on, the more you do, the faster you get another C rank or maybe higher. She says. The kids shrug saying okay as team Anko walks away from the forest of death and head to the Hokage Tower. Forex, time skip, one month wave mission arcade. The past two months were eventful to team Anko. They did lots of D rank missions, two Cs which one turned into a B. The boys had dates with their girlfriends and hung out with their friends on days off except Sasuke since he is always brooding. Naruto even told Hinata about the CRA and she accepted it knowing because of their bloodlines, yes he told her of both of them and who his parents were. When she heard about the CRA, she didn't know what to think but after Naruto told her that she would be the alpha and would help pick the girls, she was okay with it. After all when word gets out, it won't be helped. She was happy he told her in advance and not kept it a secret. He even told her about Anko. She was confused and a bit unsure but told her the reason she gave him. She still wasn't sure until she spoke to Anko herself and after a lot of talking, she accepted but only if she stayed the alpha. Anko was fine since she and Naruto talked about it. Now all was needed were two more since the minimum is four girls to marry. They boys did their pranks still since that was never gonna change unless they run out of ideas or if they are too busy. Lucky for the village, the Hokage gave them plenty to do, 
but sometimes they still got away and did their pranks. Kakashi got hit the hardest even though he was pranked twice. Now instead of being called Chicken Head he became the one-eyed cat guy for being followed and attacked by cats for two days until he found the reason why. Let's just say he is more cautious and wary of the boys but also thank them since his stealth actually improved a bit more since he was an Anbu watching them. Cause of that, the boys found it harder to prank him. When now find the boys, Alisa, and Anko in Sarutobi's office waiting for their next mission. Also there is Team 7 waiting for their mission. Well Team Anko you guys earned another C rank. The twins groan. You mean B rank right? Naruto asks trying to persuade him. No Naruto I said C rank. They deflate more. Fine. The Hokage smirks in triumph. You will be escorting a bridge builder named Tazuna to wave and help protect him until the bridge he is building is finished. He calls for the man as said man walks in reeking of alcohol. The teams turn their heads looking at him. These are my escorts? Three brats? He said. The three Janan got dick marks on their heads before the twin smirked. Careful Tazuna-san, you don't want to get on the bad side of the twin pranksters of hell do you? Gata says as they both smile a menacing smile. Tazuna shivers at that, I mean three professional ninjas. He says both scared and nervous. That's the attitude. Naruto says as the twins put on their regular smile. However both saw his body language and something didn't add up. Hey you noticed the way he is shaking right? And I don't mean the too drunk shaking. Naruto asks Ganta, yeah something's off and I don't mean it's the alcohol nor how scared he got when we looked at him. No it seems like he might be hiding something. Gana turns to the Hokage. GG I request that Team 7 comes along. Sarutobi, Anko, Alisa and Team 7 look at him strangely. Why? You four can handle it yourselves. We know but I don't think Kakashi-san has let them out of the village yet right? Naruto says as they look at him. The genins shake their heads while Kakashi sighs but he caught the look Naruto and Gana gave him. No I haven't but I guess this would be a start. If that is alright with you Hokage-sama. Kakashi says. Sarutobi thinks about it but nods all the same. Okay I approve but this falls on you too since you requested it. And don't just say only Gata said it Naruto cause I know you two plan together. The twins nod dumbly to that. Fine they are our responsibility gg. They say together slowly. Team 7 cheers, well more like Sakura cheers, Sasuke grunts with a smirk and Ken nods. Kakashi sighs. Well then all of you meet up at the west gate in an hour and pack the essentials. We might be gone for at least a week, maybe more. Anko says as both teams nod. You better not be late Kakashi-san. The twins say as they all leave. Forex. After about an hour, the twins and Elisa, after Naruto told Hinata that he will be gone a while, arrived at the gate. The twins had their scrolls while Elisa had her regular attire. They rest by the gate as they feel Anko arrive. After a couple minutes, Ken walks up followed by Sasuke, Sakura then Tezna. Is Kakashi-sensei not here yet? Sakura asks as everyone shakes their heads. However Kakashi arrives via Leaf Shushin with his signature eye smile and peace sign. Yo someone called my name? Everyone, except Tazuna, had wide eyes as they all closed their eyes and tried to release the genjutsu that might be on them. Kakashi sweat dropped at that. I'm really here guys. I'm not always late. Yeah well can you do it often then? Sakura proclaims. Kakashi waved it off. Okay guys let's get in a defensive formation around Tazuna-san. Naruto said in all seriousness. Once outside anything can happen so keep your guard up. Gata says also in all seriousness. Sakura, Ken and Sasuke gasped at that wondering when did they get serious. Guys come on. The faster we get there, the faster we get the mission done. Even if it is a C rank, things can change that down the road. So let's go, Elisa said in the same serious tone the twins had. The three shiver at that, even Tazuna all thinking they get serious outside the village. They get in formation with the twins and Ken at the front, followed by the girls and Sasuke at the back. Anko and Kakashi stand beside them as they start head forward. Forex, 30 minutes in and nothing has happened. So far all they were doing was talking to one another while the twins were quiet and kept lookout. Suddenly they pass by a puddle. The twins, Alisa, Anko and Kakashi catch that. Even Ken thanks to his bugs. The twins look at each other as they slowly furl up their sleeves, scratching their forearms like they itch. Really they are ready to defend. On their forearms are two long but thin cuts where their blood swords and other blood weapons come out. There are also other cuts in some parts of their body that don't heal but don't bleed either unless they want to. It's easier than to cut themselves which would be weird out in the open. The ones who saw the puddle keep walking like nothing happened but inside they were ready to go. Suddenly two chains surround Kakashi and Anko and before anyone could do anything, the chains come together and cut them up to pieces. 
That's two down. Team 7 gasps at that as they freeze. The assailants go for a third as their chains head for Sakura but before the chains do, they get cut in half. The assailants gasp at that as they see Elisa holding out her katana. Before the assailants can do anything they get roundhoused on their faces, one by Naruto and the other by Ganta. They get launched at two different trees as they hit them with a hard force. They groan and try to get up but feel blades on their necks. They each look at the blade on their necks and gasp seeing it red. But they look at where they come from and gasp more seeing it come out of the two genin's arms. WH what are you? The twins smirk. You don't need to know. They say before they knock them out. They drag the unconscious bodies together and tie them up by a tree as the twins head back to the group. Elisa puts her katana away as the other three Jinan and Tazana stand there in awe and shock. Anko sensei Kakashi Sani too can come out now. Naruto says as the Jonins walk out of the forest. Good job you three. Team Anka nods as the twins turn to the others. You three okay? Ganta ask as they nod slowly still in shock at what they saw. Okay now then before we keep going. Mind explaining to us why you didn't tell us the whole truth before? Ganta asks Tazna. He's right. Those two are the demon brothers, two B-ranked Chun and Nukunins. Why are they after you? Kakashi asks. Sasuke, Sakura and Ken break out of their stupor and turn to Tazuna wondering what they mean. Tazuna sighs. Oh okay I will tell you but how did you know? Kakashi points to the twins. Not sure how but they gave me a sign saying something was up. When you walked in we saw your body language. Sure you were drunk but you were also shaking and not the kind where you were plastered. It wasn't completely visible but just enough for us to see. Naruto says. This told us that you held something back or weren't telling us something. Meaning there was more to this mission than what we were lead to believe. Ganda adds on. So what are you hiding or better yet, who wants you dead? So that is why you wanted us to come along? Sasuke deducts. Naruto nods. That and what we said earlier about Kakashi not taking you guys out yet. They look at Kakashi as he chuckles sheepishly with an eye smile. Yeah well I was going to take them out soon. Right. They say making him sweat drop. Anywho, Dazana explain yourself or we will turn back. Ganda says. Dazana nods and tell them the whole story. For about 10 minutes he tells them about Gato and what he has done to Wave. There are mixed emotions in the air but the most noticeable are the twins as they look like they might explode. So this Gato scumbag put the village of Wave in poverty, is doing illegal businesses there and trafficking women? Ganda says as they both try to calm themselves. Dazana nods at that. The twins both walk to two trees as their hands become covered in blood turning into claws and obliterate the trees. Everyone gasps at that with wide eyes. Elisa and Anko smirk knowing how much these two hate people like Gato. The boys sigh as they walk back, their claws disappearing. Sorry about that but hearing that got us, aggravated, Naruto said as they look at the group. I don't know about you guys but me and Naruto are going. No matter what. Ganda states. I will too. It's stupid not to help a village in need. Elisa says as they stand by Tazna. Anko smiles. Well looks like Team Anko is going. Before Kakashi can put his input, his Janan shout I want to go too. Kakashi sighs. I was going to say yes anyway. However are you three ready for this? It will get dangerous. They nod as Tazna gasps. You will still help us? The group nods. Of course. We aren't scumbags and this Gato guy needs to be taken down. Naruto says. Thank you. Tazuna says softly. Ganta turns to Anko. Anko sensei we might want to send a message back to Konoha telling them of the situation. He says as he and Naruto make a clone. These two will take the demon brothers to the village for interrogation. Ganta says as Anko nods. She takes out a scroll and a pen and writes down the message. She hands it to one of the clones as they go and grab the brothers then run off heading to the village. All right now that that is done, let's head out again. The group nods as they get in formation again and walk forward. Forex. After about four hours, they cross a body of water on a boat, seeing the bridge Tazana is building. Wow it's huge. Sakura says in a low voice. Yes and when it's finished, Gato will be finished. It's just taking too long because of him. Tazana says with a sigh. The group stays quiet as the boat treads lightly across the water. They make to land as they get off. Tazana says his thanks to the boater as he goes and takes off. The group keeps walking as Ganta senses something in the brush and throws a kunai. Everyone minus Naruto wonder why until Ganta walks over and picks something up. It's a snow rabbit with its fur still white. Ganta gently pets it as he looks at Naruto. Everyone down. Naruto yells as they drop. A huge sword heads for them and misses them but Ganta goes and knocks out of balance with just his arm as it goes and hits the ground. Then a lone figure appears on the hilt of the sword as the sword is planted on the ground at an angle. 
Well to think Mir Janan could see through my distraction and one knock my sword like it's nothing. I'm impressed. The figure spoke in a serious tone but with a bit of surprise for those who could tell as the group could slowly see who it is as they get up. Kakashi and Anko gasp at who they see while the twins raise an eyebrow. Zabu Zamamochi, a rank missing nin from Kiri, one of the seven swordsmen of the mist. Don't tell me a great man like yourself would stoop so low in working with Gato? Naruto says, spitting at Gato's name. Zabuza was surprised but didn't show it. Well to know a brat like you knows about me makes me abbot honored. And also I'm a mercenary. I do what I can to get paid. Yeah well I still think it's low even for you. And sorry but outside the village me and Naruto aren't brats. Gata says as he walks back with the group still holding the rabbit. If you're here for Tazanai you won't be getting him. Everyone in defensive formation around Tezna. The Janan comply as the two teams get in formation. Zabuza laughs at that. Oh you think that little group can stop me? Sorry but that's where we come in. Anko says as she and Kakashi walk in front of the group in attack formation. You won't be getting through us. Kakashi says as he grabs his headband that covers his left eye. So I get to fight Sharingan Kakashi, the copy ninja and Anko Matarashi, the snake mistress? Well this should be fun. Zabuza says as he hops off and picks up his sword from the ground. The boys get a close look at it. So that's the Kubi Kirabocho. I've always wanted to see that sword. Naruto says. Zabuza smirks and sees their katanas on their sides. Oh fellow swordsman huh? Are you too good? Maybe but you won't find out. After all you have two jonins in front of you. Ganda says. Zabuza laughs as he makes a hand sign with a pose. Hiding in mist technique. He yells as a thick mist forms around everyone. Zabuza disappears as everyone tenses. The twins make dense clones each and makes a second circle as the six Shinan get closer to Tazna. Shit he's gonna do the silent killing technique. Ganda says. Guys be careful and keep your senses up. Naruto says. Kakashi lifts up his headband and reveals his Sharingan as he and Anka looks around. Kakashi does the ram seal and does a burst of chakra as the mist around them disperses just enough for the Jonins, the Jonins, the clones and Tazana to see. Kakashi turns to the group to check on them as Sasuke gasps seeing his eye. I'll tell you later Sasuke. Right now protect Tazna. He says. Sasuke shakes in fear feeling the killing intent in the air. He grabs a kunai and moves his hand when Naruto stops him. Calm down Sasuke. Our senseis won't let us die. He says when they hear Zabuza's voice. Liver, lungs, spine, clavicle vein, jugular vein, brain, kidneys, heart. Where shall I hit first? His voice echoes as Kakashi looks back and runs to the group. However he is abit late as Zabuza comes out and cuts down Tezna. But he gets surprised when Tazuna turns to smoke. A clone? But before he could finish, he gets double kicked in the chin making him fly up but he turns to water in mid-air. Water clone. Kakashi he's out there. Ganda says. Kakashi nods and moves to block Zabuza's attack with his kunai. You know your brats are annoying. Anko moves in and hits him making Zabuza turn to water again. Damn another clone. Before long both Kakashi and Anko are surrounded by clones. They scowl as they see more clones heading to the group. Looks like the brats are in trouble. What will you do? One of the clones asks smugly but stops when he sees them smirk. You have no idea who these brats are or what they can do. The clone looks at the group and sees that the Zabuza clones that were sent are gone. What the? The clone doesn't finish as Kakashi and Anko disperse them all. Come out Zabuza. Your games won't work on us. Kakashi says but both he and Anko get taken by surprise when they get kicked forward to the river. They get dunked in as they jump on the water. Damn those two techniques of his are making it tough to find him. Anko says. Well all you have to do is look to your sides. Anko and Kakashi gasp as they try to attack Zabuza but get caught in his water prison jutsu. They see him in a clone, each holding one jutsu. Kakashi scowls and turns to the team. Go run. You guys can't take him on. He says in a watered down voice as he sees Zabuza make more clones. Look his clones can only get close to 20 feet maybe more. Just run. The twins don't move as neither do the clones nor the other genins. Then they gasp, Zabuza and clones included, as the group shimmers and all there is are the twins and the clones. Sorry Kakashi-san but we don't run away. Although I wish you two didn't get caught. The twins say as they tell their clones to attack. Zabuza's clone attack too and becomes a kenjutsu battle. When all is said and done, no clones stand. Zabuza smirks. Is that all you two? I'm still here and your senseis are gonna drown. The twins roll up their right sleeves as they put their arms up in front of their faces. Zabuza looks confused until he gasps with wide eyes as he sees blood slowly come out of their cuts. 
Before long they become tentacle-like and shoot at him at high speed. Zabuza scowls not knowing how to dodge that so he breaks his jutsu. The clone is unfortunate as it gets hit dead center causing it to break Anko free. Kakashi and Anko gasp for air and cough but regain their composure as they move in fast and attack Zabuza. Zabuza goes on the defensive as he blocks both attacks from the Jonins. Damn this is too much. It would have been over if those two brats ran off. Who are they? The fight continues on dry land as Anko and Kakashi keep him busy so he doesn't use any jutsu. Zabuza starts to slow down as he becomes fatigued. They had the upper hand when two Senbon came out of the trees. They stop as they see Zabuza fall to the ground, dead. Kakashi walks over and checks his pulse indicating it. He sighs as everyone sees a hunter nin come into view. Thank you for apprehending him. I have been looking for him for quite some time. Kakashi nods as Anko shrugs. The hunter nin grabs Zabuza's body and jumps away as they boys walk up to them, looking at where the hunter nin went. Okay guys come out. Gonda says as Elisa, Sasuke, Sakura, Ken, and Tezuna appear from the brush. Good use on the genjutsu. Kakashi says as Elisa smiles. Thanks but it was the twins idea. She says as the boys smile. Kakashi nods as he covers his eyes. He sees Sasuke looking at him. Like I said before, I will he doesn't get to finish as he falls. Before he lands, the twins grab him quickly. Kakashi pants and looks at the boys. Thanks. Shush man you used your shard gun too much Kakashi. Seems like the battle took a bit longer than anticipated. Ganda says as they look at him. Yeah well I guess it's been a while since I have used it in a long battle. They nod. Yeah well we better get you to rest up since Zabuza is still alive. Naruto says making everyone except Anko, Kakashi, and Elisa gasp. But what do you mean? That guy killed him right? Sakura asks. No. Hunter Nins take the head off of the target they are chasing and burn the body no matter who sees. Also there have never been any that uses Senbon. Ganta is right. Senbon aren't really used for killing much more for medical practices and such. Know that Nin probably put him in an almost dead state. Anko says. The group gasps once more. Naruto looks at Tazna. Tazuna san where is your home? Is it nearby? He asks. Tazuna breaks from his stupor and nods. Yeah it is. Come on. Everyone nods as the twins carry Kakashi and head to Tazana's home. Forex. The group walks up to the home as Tazana unlocks the door. They walk inside as he calls out Tsunami, Inari I'm home. They see a woman by the sink washing dishes as she turns around and smiles. Kosan you're back. She says as she hugs him then looks at the group. The twins set down Kakashi on the couch as Elisa goes and checks on him using her medical knowledge. Her hands glowing green in color. Are they the ninjas that protected you? Yep and they are good, especially the twins. Dazuna points out as the twins chuckle sheepishly. Tsunami right? Ganta asks as she nods. Is there a spare bedroom? Kakashi here got injured and needs a good bed to rest on. Kakashi waves high as Elisa slaps his hand down as she keeps checking him. Don't move Kakashi-san. Tsunami chuckles. Yeah my girlfriend takes her medical stuff seriously so be best to listen to her. Okay Kakashi? Ganda says looking back at him. Elisa stops and stands up. It's mainly chakra exhaustion. But it would be better to make some medicine for him. Okay boys you can move him to the bed. They nod as they pick up Kakashi and follow Tsunami upstairs. After a while the twins come down and see everyone sitting down. Well Kakashi will be out of it until he heals. Tomorrow me, Naruto and Elisa will go get some herbs and medicine for him. Are there any crutches around? Ganta asks. There are some in the closet over there. Tazuna says pointing to a door. That's good. He can use them in a day. They see a small boy at the table looking around at everyone. He wants to say something but before he could, some rustling could be heard. They turn to Ganta who see his jacket move around. Oh yeah I forgot you were in there. He unzips his jacket and takes out the white snow rabbit they found. He holds it and gently pets it. Hey why do you have that rabbit? Inari asks, forgetting what he was gonna say. Well we found it when we were ambushed. It wasn't raised in the wild otherwise its fur would be brown and not white. So I took it with us since it's gonna be hard for it to hide. Ganda says as everyone nods. Wait ambush? Tsunami asks. Yeah while we were heading here, a ninja came out and attacked us. Our senseis fought until the ninja lost but got taken away. Naruto says. She nods at that as Inari gets up and walks to the stairs. He turns to look at them and says you're all gonna die. He runs upstairs. Inari. Tsunami says but sighs as he has gone to his room. The kids look at the stairs then her. Uh what was that about? Ganta asks as he and Naruto sit down. Ganta sets the rabbit on the table as it sits there, 
wiggling its nose. Sakura goes and pets the rabbit. Ah so soft. She says. Tsunami smiles before answering. Ah uh, well let's just say ever since Gato came, things haven't been the same. She says. Everyone nods at that and look down. I see, well we will deal with Gato since he is trying to stop the progress of the bridge. He might come out in person eventually. Naruto says. Sasuke walks up to them. Dobes what was that we saw today? Those blades and that whip thing. The twins look at him and sigh. I guess we could tell you but it's a big secret. Naruto says. Well it won't be that much in the future. But what you saw is our Kekei Genkai. Ganda says. Everyone has wide eyes. Except Ken who just shifts his glasses. A Kekei Genkai, but I never heard or even seen one like that. There are no records of it. Sakura says. That's because it's rare since there aren't any Uzumakis left. At least what we know. For now we are the only ones. Naruto says. Everyone looks down at that. Sasuke knowing how they feel. But what can it do other than the blades and whip thing? The twins look at each other. They put out their hands as one forms a glob of blood and the other has their blood crystallize on their hands. The blob we can shoot which can cause a lot of damage. The crystal there can be used as armor or offensively. Naruto says as Gata turns the crystallized hand into claws. Everyone gasps at that. Even though the armor is strong it's not impenetrable but we can still move very quickly with it. It mainly comes out as a defense if we are gonna be hit by something that we won't be able to dodge. Ganda says. It also helps that we can take out poisons from our bodies. That and regrow limbs and organs. Naruto says making everyone become shocked. They all hear a gasp as they look to the stairs and see Inari. Hey Inari. Like our bloodline? Naruto asks. Being a curious kid, he walks up to them and touches the claw. Whoa that is cool. He says in a whisper. Still think we are gonna die? Ganta asks. Inari looks down. If what you say is true then maybe not. Nope. Also a great thing is that it doesn't use chakra. Not exactly great the first time though. Ganta mentions as Naruto laughs sheepishly. Yeah it takes a lot of brain power. The Janan look at him dumbfounded. Anyway, Inari why did you say that in the first place? Ganta asks as they look at the boy. He looks at a nearby picture then looks down. Tears coming down. Ganta goes and holds him as he looks at the picture. It was Tazuna, Tsunami and Inari in it with a fourth person but the head was covered. He looks at Tazuna. Who's the fourth person in the picture? He asks as the kids look at it then him. Tazuna sighs. Well might as well tell you what happened. Tazuna goes and tells the whole story of when Gato came. How the man in the picture named Keiza became a hero but died at the hand of Gato. And all of what Gato did. By the time he was done, there was a small hint of key in the air. Everyone looks at the twins seeing them shake as their eyes are hidden by shadow. More reasons to kill the bastard. They say in a low tone. Everyone shivered at the tone, even the rabbit as it jumped to Sakura's lap. They calm down though as they look at everyone. Sorry. Guys like that make us aggravated. Naruto says as they scratch their heads sheepishly. So we noticed, Sasuke said as they each let go of a breath they were holding. Well no more talking. It's time you guys rest for tomorrow. Anko says as they all nod. Ganda and Naruto make some shadow clones. Okay guys keep a lookout around the house as we sleep. See anything suspicious and are coming here, let us know. The clones saluted and disappeared around the house while everyone walked upstairs. In his room, Kakashi overheard everything. He sighed knowing how the boys get but had a small smile on his face. Knowing those two, they might cause some trouble for Gato. He said and thought as he fell asleep again as did everyone else, wondering what tomorrow might hold. Chapter 9 Next morning, the sun rose up signifying a new day. Elisa and the twins got up an hour earlier so they could gather herbs and other plants for Kakashi. When they found enough, they headed back to Tazana's house and went to the kitchen. The boys helped Elisa in anything they could until they made the medicine needed. They headed upstairs and went into Kakashi's room as they sat down near him. He woke up the moment they came in and looked at the Janan. Elisa made sure he drank all the medicine, even if it was bitter as hell. Now you can walk around but take it easy. No running or forcing yourself to do anything. Kakashi nodded. Yes doc. Elisa smiled as the boy's sweat dropped. After a while they walked out of the room with Kakashi using crutches since his legs are bandaged up. They made it downstairs to find everyone. Hey Kakashi. Seems like you are getting better. Anko says. He still needs at least a week to fully recover unless he does something stupid. Elisa says. Kakashi sighs. I'm not gonna do anything stupid. It's these two I'm worried about. The twins gulk. Oh we won't do anything stupid. We are on a mission. And you are injured. We won't prank anyone injured. 
Naruto says. Kakashi looks at them dumbfounded. Well it is true. The only time they pranked on a mission was for distraction purposes. Except that time that one guy pissed them off. Anko says as she and her team snicker at that. Yeah well he shouldn't have been a pervert and hit on you girls. Ganda says. Anyway what are we gonna do today? Alisa asks. Well Tazana does need protection on the bridge so let's see who can. Now let's go and follow me. Kakashi says as he walks out the house. The twins and Elisa look at him dumbfounded. Didn't you tell him to take it easy? Naruto asks as Elisa sighs. Maybe it should have been a suppository. She says as everyone shudders at her calm tone when she said it. Forex. The two teams follow Kakashi to a clearing as he stands there waiting for them reading his orange book. I see you guys made it. What will we be doing Kakashi sensei? Sakura asks. I'm glad you asked. You guys will be tree walking. His team looks at him oddly while Anko and her team fault at that. You mean you haven't teach them that in how many months? Ganta exclaims. Team 7 looks at him oddly. What do you mean? Ken asks as team Anko jumps at it since they never heard him speak. Ah uh, well we actually learned this like the second day and being teams. Well I did a long time ago. Alisa says. And we learned it since before the academy. Naruto says. So basically Kakashi should have taught us this a long time ago? Sasuke asks seething. Pretty much. Team Anko says. Team 7 look at Kakashi angrily. Kakashi tried to speak but found no excuse before he hung his head. Yeah I guess I should have huh? Before anyone could retaliate, Ganta walked up with his hand out. Give me. Kakashi looks at him oddly. Give you what? The book. Kakashi looks at him in shock, never have they asked up front. Why? Punishment for not teaching them early on. Everyone had a grin as Kakashi tried to find a way out of this. WH what? No you can't. Ganda sighs. It's punishment until we get back to Konoha. Honestly I don't even know where they're at. I wouldn't even be surprised if all you did was derank. He did. Team 7 say together as everyone else sweat drops. Wow you really are lazy Kakashi-san. Maybe I should tell Gai-san about your unyouthfulness. Ganda says pondering and shivering at just saying the word as Kakashi sweats. Okay okay. Fine I guess I should have. Sorry guys. Just don't tell Guy. I don't want to hear him rant about the flames of youth all day. He says as he hands the book over in defeat, crying anime tears. Ganda seals it in a scroll marked Kakashi's then sealed it in his scroll. Okay now that is done, Kakashi you rest since we will need you when Zabuza returns. Now you guys will be taught tree walking. Naruto says as he shows them what to do. He does the ram sign showing them and takes a step on the side of the tree then another until he walks up to the first branch. See what I did? You first start by applying chakra to your feet. However too little you don't stick. Too much. Ganda runs to the tree, goes halfway and the tree bark explodes out as he jumps back to the ground. And that happens. You need a balance. It's a good exercise to balance your chakra so you can do jutsus correctly and other things. Team 7 nods at that. Ganda hands them each a kunai. Okay do what we did but at a running start. It's easier that way. Use the kunai to mark the highest you can go. Ganda says. Anko sensei. Elise and A you guys can go and stay with Tezna. We got this. Naruto shouts as they nod and Sheshin away. Okay start. He says. Sasuke in his mind is a bit reluctant with his superiority complex but complies since he has never done it before. All three run as Sasuke takes 10 steps before losing his footing and marks where he made it. He lands as he sees Ken land too. He looks up and sees that he is about the same spot he is. However they all see Sakura waving on a branch. Hey look I did it guys. Sasuke seethes wondering how she did it. Great Sakura but you did it because your reserves are small. It really takes a while to get it if you had bigger ones. Ganda says as Sasuke gets a better mood and Sakura deflates. What you can do is run up and down this tree from the branch to the trunk and back. Do it for an hour then take a 10 minute break and do it again. Do it until we say stop. Naruto says. Sakura perks up and nods then does as told. The guys start again as the boys look at them. They see Kakashi sulking but also watching them. You gonna teach them when we back? Ganta asks. He nods slowly, cursing himself inside his mind. Don't worry I won't read the book and ruin it for you. Nor will I keep it forever. Remember on missions we don't screw around and we don't do pranks unless it's a distraction. He said as Kakashi perks up from that. He nods as they go back watching his Janan. Forex. Later that night, after giving some pointers to the boys, they made it to the house. The boys made it halfway to the tree, walking, while Sakura ran for at least 10 hours. They gave her a big break though after 5 hours. Afterwards they started on leaf balancing. 
the boys left off a two in both hands while Sakura had three on both. It took them the rest of the day to get that far but thanks to the twins' pre-made meals in their scrolls they at least had dinner. When they got there, they see Elisa and Anko with tired and passive faces. Hey what's up with you two? Naruto asks as he and Gana set down Sasuke, Sakura, and Ken. Kakashi walks to a chair and slowly plops down. We walked around town. It's bad Naruto. People in the streets, a lot either begging or asleep, shops messed up. There were kids who were hungry but I didn't have anything on me. It's sad. Elisa says as the boys clutch their fists. The bridge is going okay though. No one tried to attack the workers, Anko said as the boys nod. Gone to walk to Elisa and cuddled her as Naruto walked out the house. I need to go and release some, anger. Everyone nodded as they watched him go. Tsunami speaks up. Guess he's angry huh? Well yeah but mainly it's cause we used to live and sleep on the streets too when we were younger. Anko and Elisa look down while the rest gasp. Why Ganta? Inari asks. Well we can't tell you everything but mainly it's cause of something that we never did that people hated us for. But people never saw that. They saw us as monsters. Ganta says as he looks up while everyone looks down. But don't worry. Me and bro are trying to change their minds and it's slowly working. If only Hinata were here, he said as he said the last part softly. Ganta stood up and stretched as he picked up Elisa who blushed and giggled, holding on to him. Well I don't know about you all but I'm going to bed. Ganta get up early so me and bro can watch over Tazana and I need my cuddle buddy, he said as he walked up. The girls had blushes, the guys shook their heads and Kakashi had a perverted grin. Sakura looked at Kakashi. Um Kakashi sensei is what he said true? Kakashi looks at her as he drops the grin. He sighs and nods. Sadly yes. Before they got their apartment they were kicked out of the orphanage they were in when they were four and lived in the streets before the Hokage found them. Sakura and Tsunami had tears while the boys had contemplating looks. That's terrible. Sakura whispers. Is that why mom told me to be friends with them? She thinks. Inari didn't know what to think but asked why do they smile though? I've never seen them cry or be sad. Kakashi looks at him. Probably because they got tired of crying and decided to do something about it. They started their pranks very young to get attention. Although now they do it either out of boredom or just because, Kakashi said, shuddering as he thought of some of the pranks they had pulled on him. But they will never cry unless it's out of happiness. They know that crying gets you nowhere. He finished as he stood up and headed for the stairs. It would be best if you guys slept too. Get your energy up in the morning, he said as he went to his room. Everyone thought of his words, Inari mostly as they left a big impact on him. Crying gets you nowhere. He's right. And those guys look strong. Maybe I should stop crying and try something. He thought as he had a determined look on his face and walked up to his room. Anko went and walked to her room. The Janan did too, although slowly since their muscles hurt. Man those two are slave drivers, Sasuke said softly as his teammates nodded to that. They all made it to their rooms as they went to sleep resting their muscles. Forex with Naruto, 10 minutes prior. We find him in the forest taking out his aggression on his clones and the foliage after hearing what Elisa told him. Damn Gato. We will make him pay. That is a promise. He went like that through the night until he passed out from exhaustion. Forex next morning. In the forest the sounds of various animals could be heard. There is also humming that came from a young woman. She is wearing a pink kimono with her black hair down. She also has a basket with herbs as she picks some from the ground. She kept walking until she spotted Naruto, who was dead asleep in the middle of a forest. The woman sweat drops to that but a small gasp escapes her lips as she spots his hit I ate. That's the ninja from before with the weird blood. She walks to the boy slowly as she kneels down near him. She brings her hand out and goes near his neck when she jumped back as she saw a blood blade stick out near his shoulder. Naruto wakes up from that and sees the girl before he calms down. Sorry about that. My bloodline activates when someone comes close to me that I'm not exactly aware of, he said with a sheepish look on his face. The blade retracts into his body as the girl regains her composure and walks back to him. So what are you doing out here? You're gonna catch a cold, she said as Naruto shrugs and stretches. Not possible. I can't get sick, he said with a grin. She smiles and nods. I'm guessing because off your bloodline? She asked. Hmm yes and no. But it would be best that I don't tell you the no part. She nods slowly. He looks at the basket. So gathering herbs? She nods. That's good. What you gonna make? Some medicine for a friend of mine. Ah okay. The place grows a bit quiet as she stands there. He leans back on the tree and looks at her. So how is Zabuza? He asks making her narrow her eyes. Calm down I'm not gonna attack you. Yes we are enemies but I'm not gonna attack. He pats the floor next to him. Sit. 
She stands there but not sensing anything from him that says he would do harm, she sat down. He sees she sat Abbott far off so he scoots up next to her. This makes her blush Abbott. What are you doing? She asks. Relax. What I can't sit next to you? She shrugs. It's fine I guess but how did you know? He looks at her with a smile. I'm a sensor and I can tell by your chakra signature that you are that Hunter Nin. Although a bad one since Hunter Nins behead and burn the bodies of their bounty, he said making her look at him sheepishly. Yeah well it's been like that for a long time. He nods as they look around. So why follow him? The woman looks at him. He saved me. He nods at that again before face palming. Sorry but I never knew your name. I'm Naruto Uzumaki. Haku. They nod as they look around some more. So why were you out here? Haku asks. I was out here venting some anger. She nods. Why? Well one of my teammates went around the village and told me what she saw and let's just say it set me off. He told her as he looked at her. Why work for Gato? She gasps as he looks at her. I mean you have to. It's the only reason you're here, he said as she nods. We work for him because we need the money, well Zabuza Sama does anyway. Naruto nods. You do know he will betray you right? Haku looks at him. We aren't sure but how do you know? Me and my brother Gonta read a lot and also hear of the news that goes around. We heard about Gato but weren't sure if it was true or not. But we heard, mainly from our godfather, that he is ruthless and sly. He is untrustable. The moment he sees a chance to take you out after seeing you are no use to him he will take it. And I wouldn't be surprised if he does in our battle on the bridge. Naruto looks at her. Do you really want that? Haku looks down. Definitely not but we are strong. Even the strong can get tired Haku. And if he sees that he will take you, Zabuza and us down. Well he will try anyway but fail. At that Haku softly smiles. You have a pretty smile. She blushes but turns away. I should tell you I'm a boy. Naruto laughs at that and transforms into his sexy jutsu. Haku looks at him with wide eyes. If you were you would go gushing blood from your nose. Naruko says before turning back. Haku scoffs but turns away. Damn it. Naruto sits back down. That and even though you have a great poker face, I can still tell you are lying. He says with a huge grin. Haku turns back to him. Well whatever. Naruto laughs Abbott. By the way I'm guessing you haven't found the seal yet right? Haku looks at him confused. What seal? During the battle, I snuck one of my clones behind him and put a seal on him. It absorbs chakra slowly. He puts his scroll on his lap and opens it then takes out a small piece of paper. Put this on his back and the seal will come off but his chakra will come back slowly. Let him rest some more for four days. Haku looks at the paper then at him. Why? Well because you're pretty and I want to get on your good side? She looks at him skeptically. Okay and me and my bro want to spar with him. We are Kenjutsu users and why not spar with one of the seven swordsmen? It's an honor. She nods and slowly smiles. You are a weird one Naruto Uzumaki. Thanks I try. My girlfriends call me weird too. Haku grows a small tick mark. So you have girlfriends and are hitting on me? He nods sheepishly. That definitely says you're a girl. And yes I am because of my bloodlines. And no I won't tell you the other, unless you want to be with me. She blushes at that as he giggles. What I mean is because of me and my brother's heritage, we will be put in the CRA. And I still need two more girls since the minimum is four. She nods at that. Well I guess I will get going then. We have been out here for quite some time. He stands up and stands Haku up. Are you gonna think about what I said? She blushes but nods. Yes. Everything. Good. He hands her the paper and kisses her cheek. She blushes more putting her hand on kiss cheek. He giggles at that. And hey if we do fight on the bridge, I'll try not to damage your face up. It's very pretty and smooth too. She blushes red and turns around. I'll see you later Naruto-san. She says walking away. He stares at her ass. Nice butt too. He yells as she picks up the pace. He grins and picks up his scroll then walks away. Man Anko and Urosanin changed me too much. Oh well I just hope I don't become a pervert. Anko might try though. He says as he heads to the house. Forex. While Naruto walks to the house and Haku jogs back to the base with a blush. Everyone in the house is eating breakfast after a good night's sleep and warm shower. Where is that knucklehead? Ganta asks as they wonder the same. Can't you check with your mind link? Elisa asks. Yeah but I don't feel like it right now. Besides no one told him to stay out that long. Actually he knew where his brother was in the conversation that took place. Ganta looks at the door. He's here finally. The door opens as he finishes and Naruto walks in. Before he could say hi, some egg landed on his face. You're late. 
How was talking with that girl in the forest? Some people choked on that while they looked at Ganda, who had a smirk, then Naruto who looked dumbfounded. WH what are you talking about bro? Ganta gives him a skeptical look before pointing to his head. Ooh. Naruto says. Well I passed out and woke up with a girl in front of me. They look at him incredulously as Anko pouts. Are you cheating on me and he not a chan? People look at her with wide eyes then Naruto who has a sheepish grin. Ganda and Elisa giggle. How is it cheating when me and bro are gonna be put in the CRA? CRA? Sakura asks. Clan Restoration Act. Because of our Kekhe Genkai, which the council doesn't know we have, we will be put in one when we reveal it in our heritage to the village. When? I don't know. Probably when we make Chunin. Gana says before he sees Sasuke smirk. And don't try anything Sasuke since you're the last to Chiha, you will be put in one too. Odd the council hasn't even thought of it. Sasuke pales at that and stays quiet. So Hinata and Anku are gonna be part of it? Naruto nods as Sakura looks at Ganta. How about you Ganta? Well I chan obviously and Hinabi chan since per the agreement between our parents and their parents. Don't ask, it's very complicated but all will be revealed. Everyone nods at that. Wow the CRA. Sounds complicated. Tsunami ponders. You have no idea Tsunami-san. Because of it, we could get random marriage proposals from different nations. I know Kuma will try because of a situation that happened about 7 maybe 8 years ago. Other than that I'm not sure who else. But we will talk with Gigi about it when the time comes. And yes Sasuke you can talk with him too. Naruto says as Sasuke was about to say something but quieted down. We know you don't want your fangirls getting wind of this, especially since they are annoying and put shame to other kunoikas. Ganda says as most look at Sakura. She shrinks under their gaze. WH what? Sakura if you want to be a ninja you have to stop being a fangirl. Alisa says. You also need to eat more to gain muscle. Do you think that diet you are on is doing you any good? It's not good for your body. You may be smart but you need more than that to survive in the ninja world. So Tsunami-san give her more food. She needs to build up. Tsunami not and refills Sakura's plate. Sakura looks at it then Elisa. You sure? This time Anko speaks up. Hey look at us. We didn't get this way by eating diets and waiting for Prince Charming. We ate food that helps our bodies and trained. And look we still got our princes. The boys chuckle at that. Hey we didn't know we were your princes. Ganda says. Well most of the time you two aren't but we aren't complaining. Elisa says. The boys fault at that as the group laughs. Not funny. Naruto says pouting. The boys regain themselves as they look at Sakura. But they are right. You wanna be a Kunoichi right? Naruto asks. Sakura nods. Then listen to them. They have been at it longer than you. So eat right and train. Which is what will we do now since we had to wait for a certain knucklehead. Ganda said as Naruto rubs his head nervously. Sorry. Let me eat right quick and we can leave. They nod as Tsunami makes another plate and they eat. They talk for Abbott about random things while the girls talk among themselves. After a while, the group heads out and split up. The twins with Tazana and the girls with the others. Tazana and the boys walk to the village and make small talk when it dies down as they see the village. The boys stay quiet as they look around and see what Elisa was talking about. The village is in complete ruin. The streets are messed up. The people look worse. The shops are either unlivable or almost useless. They kept walking when a little girl came up. H hey, hi mister. D do you have any faux food? She stutters obvious from hunger. The twins look at each other before Gonda pull out his scroll. He opens it and then takes out a small basket full of breads, cheeses and meats. Here you go little one. Go share with your friends. He says as the little girl gasps and cheers. Thanks Nichan. She takes the basket and runs to some of the kids nearby. They wave at them and run off. Dazuna smiles as they walk again, handing out some food and their scrolls to random people. Are you sure you have enough? They nod. Our scrolls contain a year's supply of food each. So yay we do. Naruto says making Tazuna a gasp. They walk until they hear a commotion. They see a man being kicked out of a shop as two men walk out, one carrying a small girl. The girl is crying as the man was in pain. The two men stand there sneering. PL please don't take her. I why will pay you. You already owe us enough. The skinnier bandit said as he kicked the man. The man groaned as he was kicked again. The bandit was going for a third kick when his leg was grabbed. Both of the bandits looked at the source as they saw Ganta holding the whip that was holding his leg. Hey brat let go of me or you will regret it, he yelled but one look at Ganta's eyes made him shiver. His purple eyes were cold and angry, very angry. You two idiots have two options. One is let go of the girl and walk away unharmed. 
The second is you two end up hurt with broken bones. Now pick, Ghana said with a very serious voice, some anger in it. The bandits looked at each other and laughed. You can't say shit little man. We are bigger, Stro before the big one finished, Naruto hit him square in the face with a kick. He grabbed the little girl as the man fell. The other bandit gasped not even seeing the kid move before he was thrown in the air then double kicked in the stomach. He fell onto the other bandit as they both lay on the street. They looked up at the boys in fear and pain. Seems like they picked number two. Well we kinda wanted that, Naruto said. Now listen up, tell Gato we are coming for his head. And if he does anything to piss off the twin pranksters of hell, well let's just say he will go out with a bang, Gana said as they both smirked at the men. The men got up in pain and ran off in fear, falling on the dirty and rubble-ridden street. The boys looked at the girl in Naruto arms who was trembling a bit as they turned to the man. Gana picked him up and held him. You okay? The man nodded. How about you little one? Naruto asked the girl. The girl didn't respond as he looked at Ganta. We need to get her to Elisane. Ganta nodded as he summoned a blood clone. Stay with Tazana and do what he says. He needs to be protected. Make as many clones also just in case. The blood clone nodded and went to Tazna. The twins looked at the man. We will take her to my girlfriend who knows medical jutsu. She will be okay alright? The man nods hoping she will be fine. Naruto hands her to Ganta as he makes 10 clones. Go back to the house and protect it. We don't want to take any chances. Go. Naruto barked out as the clones saluted and disappeared. The twins look at each other and nod before running off back to the forest. Forex. With the other group, Team 7 is making great progress. They now all mastered leaf balancing with three leaves on both hands while tree walking. They were now water walking on a nearby lake. Kakashi was asleep as his Jinan were practicing. Sakura also mastered it easily but then had to run some laps on the lake to build up her reserves. For the boys it was a bit harder but were slowly getting it. Kakashi opened his eye and looked at the two figures coming, one carrying a third. What are you guys doing back? Kakashi said as the group heard them. I chan we need medical help, Ganta yelled as Elisa ran up to them. What's wrong? It's this little girl. She's unresponsive, Naruto said as Gana laid the girl down gently. She was breathing slowly. Elisa's hand glow green as she checks over the girl. She scowls. Not good. Her body is weak. She needs food. Ganta you still have my scrolls in there? Elise asks as Ganta nods and takes them out of his big one. Elisa opens one and finds what she needs. She takes out a vial of green liquid and pours some in a teaspoon. She gently opens the mouth of the little girl and gives it to her. After a bit, the little girl coughs as Elisa lays her head on her lap. The little girl opens her eyes and looks around. To Tosan? She says weakly. Don't worry he is fine. And you are okay, Ganta said. The little girl nods and looks at them. WH who are you? We are the ninja that are here to help. She looks at them with a smile. DH thank you. I'm very who hungry. Ganta takes out a wrapped sandwich from one of his scrolls and unwraps it then hands it to her. Elisa sits her up as the little girl starts to eat. Eat slowly so you don't choke. She nods as she takes slow bites. It's good. She says softly. The group chuckles as Kakashi looks at the boys. So what happened? The boys' faces take a sour turn. We were in the village walking our heading to the bridge. It was bad so we started to hand out food. Naruto started. After a while we heard a commotion and saw two bandits kicking a man and taking this girl. We gave them a warning. Gata says as they look at Kakashi. He flinches at the look they gave him but knew it wasn't towards him. Gata will pay. This village has suffered enough. Naruto says as everyone nods. The little girl looks at Ganta. You have something to drink? Ganta nods and takes out a canteen. He opens it and hands it to the girl. She gently drinks and hands it back. Thank you. She finishes eating the sandwich as she looks at the group. Are you really gonna help? Everyone nods. Ganta packs everything back up. Yes we are little one. What's your name? Kakashi asks. Tsubaki. Well Tsubaki wanna go home? She nods as Ganta picks her up again. Let's take you home. Oh and don't worry, I left a Chibushin with Tezuna and Naruto sent some clones back to the house. Ganda says as Kakashi nods. The twins look at the other Jinan. Good luck at the water walking guys. Tomorrow we will check your elemental affinities and teach you some jutsus, Naruto said as they nod. Later, they said as they walked back to the village not wanting to mess up the little girl. The group watches them leave as the turn back to what they were doing before, all thinking about that girl in the village. Forex. The twins make it to the village as they walk heading back to where the girl lives. They arrive and see the man outside with a grief-stricken face. Hey! The twins yell as the old man turns and sees them and his daughter. 
He smiles as some tears come down his face. Tosan. She says as they make it to him and hand her to him. He hugs her as the twins smile. Are you okay? He asks. She nods. These two and their friends helped me, she said as the man turns to them. Thank you. I can't give you anything. The boys hold up their hands. It's okay. We are here to help. Naruto says as he hands them a basket of food. Here this should last you the week. The man takes the basket and looks at them. Aye aye. Is there anything you want? He asks. Don't lose hope. Gata says as they turn around and walk away, handing out food to anyone in need. The man stands there at awe as he held his daughter in the basket. Those are ninjas Tosan. I think they will help the village. She says softly with a smile. The man looks at her and nods. Yes they will. Let's not lose hope yet. The man said as he walked back inside. Forex. The twins stop in the street looking at the people. Gata might try something later on. We should protect these people. Let's make enough cage bushings with enough chakra so they can last. Gata says. Yeah. I have some soldier pills just in case. Naruto says as he takes them out. Good. They make a hand sign and yell to Juo cage bush and no jutsu. The people gasp as they see a thousand Naruto and a thousand Gandas. They all pop in their mouths the soldier pills as the twins look at the clones. Okay guys we have to protect the village. Hand yourselves into the civilians and protect them. If any of Gato's goons try to harm them, stop them. Make sure no civilian is hurt. We are here to bring the peace back and send Gato packing. Got it boys? They say as the clones salute with a chorus of high being heard. The villages look in awe as the clones do what they are told. The twins smirk as they see their clones blend into the village. Let's see Gato do something now, Ganda said as they head for the bridge. Forex, nightfall, the rest of the day went well. No problems on the bridge, Team 7 got their water walking down, the village had no problems and nothing happened at Tazuna's house. Both teams are eating dinner at the moment with the small family and the rabbit as the twins look at the Genins. So how far are you guys at in water walking? Naruto asks. Well I got it quickly but then ran some laps on the water, Sakura said. Me and Ken accomplished it later than Sakura and then us three started the leaf balancing. It's very hard to do, Sasuke said as they could all agree to that. Definitely right on that. The larger the reserves, the harder it will be to do, Gunna said. How long it take you guys? Sakura asks. Well the tree walking took about three days, the water walking about five. The leaf balancing the same on both and kunai balancing took a week also. Why so long? Ken asked. Mainly because our reserves are cage level. We think it's a Nuzumaki trait but we aren't sure, Naruto said. The kids look flabbergasted at this. What? It's true. We can't do regular bushin at a small scale. That's why at the academy we couldn't do it. We would overload them. However cage bushin is another story. We both can make upwards to a thousand. Gana said as the kids had their jaws to the floor. Close your mouths. You will let flies in, Elisa said with a giggle. But for you guys will be a bit simpler thanks to your smaller reserves. So how many leaves did you get to? Naruto asked. We got to three on each hand, Sakura said. The twins nod. Good. You can try to do more. The more you can balance, the better your control. And you need great control for Jutsus. Gana said, so far we can balance 14 on each hand while tree walking and 12 on each while water walking. Now the last and hardest to do is balancing on a senbone on water while balancing 3 senbone with 3 kunai spinning on them on 3 fingers on both hands. Do that and basically you're an expert. The Janan were speechless. Hell even Kakashi was. So Kakashi how the legs? Naruto asks. Kakashi breaks from his stupor. Well they are getting better. Just 2 more days and I will be right as rain. That's good. We need to talk later about something by the way. Kakashi nods as Inari speaks up. Is it true what you did for the village today? Gata looks at him. What you mean? Well me and Kasan heard as we walked through it saying two ninjas with blonde hair and red hair were helping people. Yep it's true kid. We gave out food that should last them a week and made a ton of clones that will last until we dispel them, Naruto said. Inari looked at the in awe. Hey Inari you will let flies in if you don't close your mouth. Gana said. Inari blushed as the group giggled. They finished dinner and talked with one another. Kakashi, Naruto, Ganta, and Anko were upstairs in Kakashi's temporary room. So what is it you want to talk about? Kakashi said. Well it deals with the girl I saw this morning. What gonna brag or something? Anko said. Naruto gave her a disbelieving look. No Anko sensei. The girl is that hunter nin from before. The Jonans get wide eyes. Now before you say anything. I had a reason not to attack her. Other than hitting on her? Ganta asks as Naruto sighs. 
You guys are having way too much fun with this. Hey I can do it cause you made fun of me when I talked with Ichan. Naruto grins. Okay fine whatever. Anyway I told her about what Gato might do. She told me she might think about it and tell Zabuza. So we don't know what might happen when he arrives. He should be healed in 3 days so expect something then. Wow this girl must have been that pretty huh? Kakashi asks making everyone snicker. Naruto looked at him in irritation. Yeah yeah laugh it up. We are just teasing Naruto. But we will take it in consideration, Onko said. So then that day, what do you suggest? We will fight, obvious but try not to kill them. However don't go easy and I do want to fight Haku, Naruto said. Haku is it? Cute name. Kakashi says. The group snickers as Naruto sighs. You guys suck. Oh come on you would do the same to any of us. Ganda says. Yeah well, uck. Naruto sits back on the chair he is in. Ganda pets the rabbit gently. So what are you gonna do with that rabbit? Anko asks. I don't know. Maybe let Inari keep it. He seems like a good kid. The only problem is trying to change its internal clock since right now it thinks it's winter. He said as they nod at that. But I can think about it later. So we will fight them in three days. It will probably be early morning so we will have to go out there before the workers come. It will definitely happen on the bridge. So the best we can gotta stops as he looks in the direction of the village. Hmm seems like they didn't heed our warning. One of my clones got taken out. Same here. We made plenty but it would be best to check. They both grab their heads. Ow. Damn asshole. They say as they could hear explosions. Fuck he's bombing the village? Kakashi stay here. Me and the twins will go, Anko said. Kakashi nods as they head to the other rooms. Achan. I heard. Are we going? Yes but it might be better to stay here just in case the family needs help. Ganta kisses her. I love you. Stay safe okay. He whispers as she says it back. Forex. In the village, screams could be heard as flames could be seen. The clones were fighting Gato's forces as some of the Naruto clones were putting out the fires. Other clones guided the villagers to safety into the forest. Anko and the twins arrive to see a huge amount of men and clones fighting together. Gato. The twins yell at the top of their lungs. The fighting stops for Abbott as everyone looks to a roof and sees them. Ah so you are the ones who made that threat huh? Well try to back it up. Those words are ones he would regret. The twins jump down between the man and the clones as Anko stays nearby. Hey two brats won't stop me. Suddenly the air is filled with ki. The men drop to their knees as they see the faces of the twins. All the clones nearby disperse from the force. As they watch, they see a red substance form around them. Anko gasps as she sees the red chakra surrounding the boys as their eyes change, their canines and nails grow and their hair gets a bit longer. The key stops as everyone could see the boys covered in red chakra, looking straight at the men. We warned you, they said in a deep voice that held power. Now you will pay for your crimes Gato. They bring their arms out and get in a kenjutsu stance, both holding two very big kunai in their hands. Then the kunais grow and stretch in a crescent to be 10 feet long and 3 feet wide, with holes from the hill to the tip each smaller in size. They were still very thick since they didn't need that much length. What made them really stand out is the red that appeared in the edges of the blades in the center of the holes. It was blood, their blood as the blades now extended another 2 feet long and 1 foot wide. In the holes were sangans but instead of just chakra, they were mixed with blood making them appear like eyes. There was also the red chakra mixed in with the blood. The men and Gato backed up in fear. Even Anko was scared never seeing that before. Nearby was Haku in her hunter nin attire. She was also scared seeing the boy she started to like, in that state. She didn't want to run, no, it was like she couldn't. She was sweating as she watches the twins stand there with swords that look like they belong to hell. Then she heard them speak again. Now it's time to save this village from your clutches and get rid of you forever. Your reign of pain and terror ends here. Forex, back at the house, Elisa and Team 7 were fighting off some goons. They weren't tough considering they have no ninja training. Elisa cut most down while the other used their own way. That was until they felt the powerful chakra but it didn't feel evil, no more like it was angry at someone. They even heard the voice or voices, whatever it was. It was godlike and feared. The fighting stopped and Elisa and the team took advantage and took the rest down. Forex, in the hideout, Zabuza was resting for the big fight between him and the two teams. However he woke up with a gasp as he felt the chakra. He didn't know Gato had gone ahead with all of his men and attacked the village. He leaned up Abbott but grunted in pain as he looked at the direction it was coming from. He heard the voice or voices also and cringed in fear. What the fuck is that? Hakua I hope you are okay. It was the last time he would see Gato alive. Forex. Anyone that felt this was shaking in fear. 
They never felt this before, not this close anyway. The men tried to run. They tried to plead. Begged for mercy but got none as the twins walked forward and cut each one down in a single strike, their bodies cut in two as they burned or were blasted away. Nothing left but aches or bits of body parts. The twins cut everyone down but one. Gato was on his knees, crying with his mouth agape, pleading to the gods about forgiveness, but none would come. The twins stood in front of him and put their blades on his neck. We would kill you but we think the village should have that privilege, they said as the chakra slowly disappeared. The blades shrunk down as the blood went back into them until all that stood in front of Gato were the twins and their kunai. Do you really think you deserve mercy? Naruto asked. Gato shook. I will give you whatever you want, money, women, power. The boys scoffed at that looking at him. All you will get is death and this village will be at peace, Gato said as they hit his head with the blunt end of the kunais and knocked him out. Gato hit the floor, out like a light, as Onko and Haku jumped down. The boys looked at them with a smile. Sorry I think we went a bit too far, Gata said as they chuckled as Anka looks at Haku. So you're Haku? You can take the mask off. Naruto told us about you. Haku nods and takes it off. Yes. Um what was that? The twins look away. That was Kyuubi's chakra. We both can use it even though he's in Naruto. Naruto is the Kyuubi Jinchuriki, Gata said. If you hate me that's fine. I know we didn't look human. Naruto says as Haku looks down but does something unexpected. Anko gasps as Haku kisses Naruto. Even he wasn't expecting that but returned it. They broke off as Haku had one huge blush. That looks so familiar. Gana says with a snicker. Um you don't hate me? Naruto asks softly. Haku shakes her head. No I don't. You are still you, Naruto Uzumaki. He nods at that. How is Zabuza? He's fine although now I guess we don't have a job anymore. Haku said as she looked down. Well maybe you two can help out on the bridge when he is better. Gana says. Haku nods as Gana goes and ties up Gato. A present to the villagers. The four nod at that as they hear footsteps. They turn to see their group, Tazuna, Inari, Tsunami, and the rest of the village along with the leftover clones. Before anyone could say anything, the twins lift up Gato. Gato was captured. You are all free. They throw him in front of Tazna. Do what you please with the trash. They turn to the clones. Guys put out the rest of the fires. The clones nod and do as they are told. The village is quiet until. We are free. Gato is no longer in control. Inari yells at the top of his lungs. Tazana lifts him up as the village cheers. Some of the men grab Gato and haul him off. The team looks at the twins and Anko then Haku. Hey wait that is the hunter nin. Relax Sakura, she isn't the enemy anymore. Not after Naruto got talking with her. Ganda and Anko snicker as Haku blushes and Naruto shrugs. Yeah yeah she is the girl I saw in the forest. The team nods at that. Only you can turn an enemy into a friend Naruto. Sasuke says. Everyone laughs at that. Well, all we have left is to finish the bridge and we will be done, Naruto said. Everyone nods at that. Forex. The village was celebrating as they strung up the body of Gato on a cross, the same way he did to Keizo on that fateful day. Everyone was partying, drinking, and enjoying themselves off of the food the twins gave them. It was the day they would never forget and would always stay in their hearts. The teams were in Tazana's home as they were asleep, ready for tomorrow as the party lasted into the night. That's the end guys if you enjoyed then make sure to leave a comment this is Chaos Shinobi signing off.